Wrigley Field in Chicago, 355 down the left field line and 353 to the foul pole in right. 400 feet to dead center field and 368 into the power alleys in left center and right center. The power belonged to the Cubs yesterday with those three home runs, Tony, Say, Moreland, and Jody Davis. Here's the umpiring crew. Doug Harvey, the veteran behind home plate. Joe West at first. Jerry Crawford, the second base umpire. And Bob Davidson will be at third base. The wind blowing in from right field, so it'll kill any ball hit out to the right field sector. Anything hit the left center field will be given a little help if it's up in the air. A great, great ballpark, and they'll have another packed house. Let's take a look at the lineup Whitey Herzog will use today against the left-hander Steve Trout. The Cardinals will lead off with Lonnie Smith, a lifetime 316 hitter who's batting 269. And there are those who say, Tony, that Lonnie Smith really is the key to this Cardinal attack. Well, he's been hitting a lot of ground balls to the left side, pulling off the ball. Whitey Herzog's been working with him along with other of the players. Ozzie Smith moves up to the second spot with the left-hander Steve Trout. There's Trout walking out toward the mound. Ozzie is batting 240 overall, but right-handed, he's hitting 350, 21 for 60. So he bats second today. Willie McGee, who had two hits yesterday and is batting 256, is the center fielder and number three hitter. George Hendrick got a day off yesterday, back in the cleanup spot against the left-hander today and playing right field. David Green plays first base, and he bats fifth. The switch hitter Tommy Hur is the second baseman batting sixth. Another move designed because the left-hander is starting for the Cubs, Art Howe at third base, and he bats seventh. Darrell Porter, left-handed batter, drops to number eight, and he'll catch. And Ralph Citarella makes his first major league start, pitching today for the Cardinals. Steve Rainbow Trout, who has become the ace of this staff for Jim Fry's Cubs. Here's the defense behind him. Gary Matthews in left or near, who just covers almost all of that outfield for the Cubs. Hasn't made an error yet this season. He's in center. Keith Marlin playing regularly with Mal Hall gone to Cleveland in right field. Ron Say, Larry Vaughn, Ryan Sandberg, and Leon Durham around the horn. Jody Davis, the catcher. And Steve Trout, who's making his first appearance since June 13th. He left a game against Montreal here at Wrigley Field with a swollen left index finger, injured it while batting. Prior to that, he'd had to leave a couple of starts early because of arm problems. So in his last three starts, he hasn't pitched beyond the sixth inning. Prior to that, you go back to May 30th when he flirted with a no-hitter. He no-hit Atlanta at Atlanta for seven and two-thirds before Albert Hall got an infield single. Overall, Trout is seven and three. His ERA of 2.30 is third in the National League behind Nolan Ryan of the Astros and Alejandro Pena of the Dodgers. And Bob, this is Trout's fourth start against the Cardinals. He has one win, no losses against them. Earned run average below one. I'll tell you, Billy Connors, the Cubs pitching coach, has done a job on Trout. He has got him sinking his fastball, and he will pitch games now where 90%, 9 out of 10 pitches, are pitches off his sinker ball. Fastball, chain speeds, he'll mix in an occasional breaking ball. He'll speed it up his most a little bit. If he keeps the ball down with his high grass, he'll be tough today. Let's take a look back at yesterday's action. A rocky first inning for John Stuper of the Cardinals as the Cubs scored four times. Here's the Moreland home run. A three-run shot in the first. Moreland has been hot of late. Had a string of six consecutive hits earlier in the week against the Phillies and Pirates. And here he runs out his fifth homer of the year. This is later with Jeff Lottie pitching and Jody Davis. It's the back fence almost making it onto Waveland Avenue with home run number 11 for him. And then a bit later on in the ballgame, Ken Daly, the left-hander they acquired from Atlanta in the Oberkfeld deal, is touched for a Ron Say homer. Number 10 on the season for Say. The Cubs romp. Russell gets the win. 9-3 Cubbies. Now well, Whitey Herzog was lamenting this morning in front of the bunch of writers about pitching high fastballs and high sliders to this Cubs team. And that's what they hit yesterday. Ron Say, he has a streak of 57 consecutive errorless games approaching a National League record. The Cub third baseman. Ball one to Lonnie Smith. Fouled off one and one. Although Smith's batting average is down, one saving grace is that his walks are up. He's drawn 37 walks this year, giving him an on-base percentage of 376, which is pretty good. 
Whitey Herzog was saying the irony of it all is show you how goofed up we are. We're leading the National League in walks. Squib down to Durham. He'll take it himself for the first out. Cardinals basically have been a pretty much of a free swinging ball club. They hit and run a lot. They start base runners. They hit to all fields off you. They're not usually the kind of team that walks a lot. You wonder if they'd be, become a little passive and not as aggressive as a team with the bats in their hands. The Cardinals are a team which likes to get in front early even more so than most clubs because their plan is to try to get to the sixth inning or so bring in Neil Allen and then follow up with Bruce Suter. But the Cardinals who have had trouble scoring runs generally have been especially ineffective early. They haven't scored a first inning run since May 30th. They've gone 19 straight games without a first inning run. Tap foul. Steve Trout is 26 years old, 6'4 and 189. His famous father, Dizzy Trout, was a right-hander. Pitched for 15 years in the American League, mostly with the Tigers. Two and one to Ozzie Smith. In fact, Dizzy, Rainbow's father, pitched in the 45 World Series for the Tigers against the Cubs. Dizzy Trout twice won 20 games for the Tigers with a high of 27 in 1944. 3-1 and one to Ozzie Smith. What a combination Dizzy Trout and Hal Newhouser were for the Tigers in the 40s. 1944, Trout won 27. Newhouser won 29. Ozzie Smith draws a one-out walk. Nick Leva is the first base coach down there with Ozzie Smith. Hal Lanier, the Cardinal coach at third. Willie McGee, 256 overall. Go to first and Ozzie back easily. Willie is not as good a hitter right handed as left handed, has a tendency to chase breaking balls outside the strike zone when batting right handed. And he's at just 196 from the right side this year. He went into one of those stretches, Bob, where they stopped throwing him strikes. They know that he swings at anything. And then when he stopped swinging the bat, trying to lay off bad pitches, he lost a little bit of his aggressiveness. Fouled off 0 1. It's interesting, Bob. Yesterday before the ball, we sat with the redhead, Red Shaney. He's been around the Cardinals for a lot of years. He was saying, You will see more balls by my, our hitters, Cardinals, right handed, fouled off to the right side, left handers fouled off to the left side. He said, We just seem to be swinging late on all fastballs. Although the Cardinals record this year is better against left handed pitchers decision wise than rights left handers do give them trouble you cut their running game down a little bit you turn the switch hitters around to the right side. A one pitch to Willie McGee from Steve Trout. False start had Larry Bow out of position. Uh, Trout sped up his delivery. He sped up his delivery just a little bit. What happens is, we'll show you from our left center field camera, Trout varied his rhythm, but that little move got Larry Bow about four steps out of position had the ball been hit to the left side. Little tap, Say comes in and fields it, no chance at second, retires McGee at first, and Ozzie Smith is in scoring position with two out. Cubs defense generally, you've talked about his consecutive game errorless streak. Ron Say trying to catch Jimmy Davenport for the National League record. Don Money holds the Major League record. But they don't make a whole lot of errors. They won about 10 consecutive games. Errorless ball, this uh, team. They don't cover a whole lot of ground on the left side or in left or right center, right field. They don't miss many. So now Hendrick with two out and a man at second. Ball one to him. There's some concern now with Mel Hall having been dealt to Cleveland. That outside of Bob Dernier, the Cubs are sorely lacking in outfield speed with Dernier flanked by Matthews in left and Moreland in right, and they think it might hurt them, especially on the road on AstroTurf. Well, tomorrow, Henry Cotto will be called back up from the minor leagues. There's a 10 day waiver period. That's up tomorrow because of the confusion with the trade. So they'll have defensive speed if they need him late in the ballgame. Outstanding outfielder. One on one now to Hendrick as we pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network.
This ball is lined, and it is through there for a base hit. The Cardinals may have a first inning run. Here comes Ozzie. For the first time in almost a month, the Cardinals are on the board of the first inning. Well, this is the man they count on so for RBI production. A good low ball hitter. You can see the ball down at the knees with that straight up stance. Hendricks like to extend those arms. Now a little conference. Durham will have a talk with Trout. If the reaction to the Cardinal run seemed a bit louder than you're accustomed to hearing for a visitor's run at Wrigley Field, it's because a lot of Cardinal fans are in attendance every time these two teams meet here. And similarly, in St. Louis, the Cubby fans make the trip in. A lot of red shirts and red hats at Wrigley Field today, Cardinal boosters. Well, they can talk about giant Dodger matchups down through the years. Yankee Boston Red Sox but this rivalry is right up there with them. Cardinals Cubs. One and oh to David Green. Change up. Change swung up. on and missed. Everything off his fastball. Billy Connors has taken away a couple of his pitches. He'll use them to show hitters a slider and curveball but basically it's changing speeds on the fastball the sinker. Green has hit Trout well. He's eight for 17 against him lifetime. Two and one. I'll tell you, Steve Trout doesn't miss a whole lot. With the help of Charlie Fox, an executive here and super scout, he's been into Zen Buddhism. He's been into the martial arts. Today he had a session with hypnotist Harvey Meisel out of St. Paul. He's covering all the ground, isn't he? Next thing you know, it'll be hot tubs and quiche. <laughs> He has been known as a flake, and I mean that in a pleasant fashion. So he's too fighting. Whitey Herzog, who just a couple of years ago won a world's championship with basically the same ball club. Different pitching staff. It's been changed a little bit with the point. Of course, uh, saw shoulder stupor suffering. And the big changes at the corners of the infield. Obergfell gone and Keith Hernandez gone. Payoff pitch with the runner going, and Green is a strikeout victim. But the Cardinals touch Trout for a run in the top of the first on the RBI single by Hendrick. Lead it 1 0 with the Cubs coming up at Wrigley. Ralph Citarella, who made a few relief appearances this past September for the Cardinals and actually pitched pretty well on that occasion, makes his first major league start against this lineup. Bob Dernier hitting 313. 26 stolen bases. He's developed into one of the game's best leadoff men. He'll start it for the Cubs. Followed by Ryan Sandberg. What a one-two punch. Gary Matthews will be in left field. He'll bat third. Leon Durham, who's an early season MVP candidate, the cleanup man at first baseman. Hot hitting Keith Moreland, who had slumped early, now has his batting average up to 273. He'll bat fifth, play right field. Jody Davis, the sixth hitter and catcher. Ron Say bats seventh, plays third base. Larry Boa, the shortstop hitting eighth. And Steve Rainbow Trout, the pitcher, of course. Cinderella, his first major league start, will have this defense behind him an awful lot of speed. Lonnie Smith in left, Willie McGee with a gold glove in center field, George Hendrick, right field, Art Howe at third, the Wiz, Wizard of Oz, Ozzie Smith at shortstop, Tommy Herr recovering from knee surgery three times he's had that done his range has been cut just a little bit or more his quickness but he's still an outstanding second baseman David Green at first base Daryl Porter the catcher Cinderella you always look for a pitcher that you can compare compare a newcomer to maybe it's a guy right across the diamond with the Cubs Chuck Rainey a pitcher that does not impress you with outstanding stuff but he'll nibble on the corners chain speeds little slider little curve straight chain sink the fastball on occasion this kind of pitcher can get lost in the minor league system because he does not impress a lot of scouts with the radar guns. They say he doesn't throw hard enough. Cardinal people like manager Whitey Herzog, GM Joe McDonald will candidly tell you that Cinderella is not regarded as a great prospect. Not like Rick Ownby, for example, whom they got from the Mets and the Hernandez deal. He's down at Louisville and probably will be up with the big club shortly. But Cinderella went down to Louisville after failing to make the Cardinals in spring training and went 9-0. And the Cardinals will flatly tell you we just had to give him a chance. He deserved it. Regardless of what the scouts say, the kid was 9-0. Here's Dernier, ball one. 
He's the kind of pitcher with the little sinking action on his fastball and slider will have to move hitters off the plate. Something that was discussed in our pregame show. Not a knockdown, a brushback pitch. Got to keep the right-handed hitters off the outside corner. A ball and a strike to Dernier, who has reached base in his first at-bat, leading off a ball game for the Cubs at an uncanny pace. 600 is his first time at bat on base percentage. Two and one. Dernier off a new pitcher, taking a few pitches, one he's never seen before. Taking a look to see what his fastball does. Trying to get a little scouting report that he can pass along back to the players on the bench when his at bat's done. Cinderella is from East Orange, New Jersey. He's 26 years old, six feet tall. Weighs 180 pounds. Two two pitch to Dernier. Line drive and he's on base again to start the game. Lonnie Smith fields it. Big turn by Dernier and he settles for a single. I'll tell you one of the fine advanced scouts in baseball from the Dodgers Eddie Libertar talking last night after the ball game about Dernier. And Sandberg, the best one-two combination he feels in baseball. You sure got to think of Wiggins and Gwen over with the Padres. What about Whitaker and Trammell in Detroit? Yeah. It's not bad either, is it? They give you an argument, but Dernier and Sandberg rank right up there. They compare Dernier's running speed out of the batter's box with Juan Samuel, a fine-looking young second baseman for the Phillies. I think Samuel's got him by a little bit. We're near doing a little groundskeeping down at first base with some soft dirt after a rain yesterday. Sandberg had four hits Thursday in a loss at Pittsburgh, including a home run. Had three hits yesterday against the Cardinals. Ball one high. Interesting to watch base dealers like De Niro. He's got the last time he had that left arm cocked to get that arm thrust. Turn that upper body, get that crossover step. With a great Lou Brock, being coached by a great sprinter, Jesse Owens, talking about the arms. To get the legs chugging. Won't be long now for Brock. I guess next year would be his mm. first year of eligibility for the Hall of Fame, and I'd be surprised if he doesn't make it on the first ballot. I would too. Sandberg, who can take the ball the opposite way, hit the gap, has learned to look for pitches in situations. This is one of them. One and over, he'll drive the ball more. Here's the 1 0. 2 0 to Sandberg. He's at 321 with seven homers and 38 RBIs. He's got nine triples, second in the league to the Phillies' Samwell. And he's tied for the league lead in doubles with 19 with Terry Francona of Montreal. Francona, of course, on the disabled list now. There goes Dernier. Pitch is taken for a strike, and the throw is not in time. Daryl Porter did all he could. He caught the ball with two hands, got rid of the ball in a hurry, made the perfect throw, but Dernier stole it off Cinderella. Her covering the bag. Here it is from left center field. Heading straight for the bag. Some coaches have taught for years that you look over your shoulder and pick up the ball in case it's hit. That theory has become passe. You lose a step or half a stride, you're thrown out. If you break your stride or you look over your shoulder. Now Cinderella is behind Sandberg three and one. With a guy hitting as well as Sandberg has been and ahead on the count three and one. Do you want to take you a bet. shot at right field he's still? Got at least one at least this strike ahead. Take a chance for base hit. If not he still advances the runner. It's just good team baseball. And he'll do it. Or he'll try to do it. Breaking ball for a strike three and two. Those are the kinds of pitches a pitcher like Cinderella has to make. Get the breaking ball over when you're behind in the count as a pitcher. The old Johnny Sane theory. If you can throw a breaking pitch over when you're behind two and one, 
three and one, two and zero. Oh, you can win in the big leagues. Now the hitter doesn't know what to look for. And the payoff. Line drive, base hit. Dernier rounds third. Zimmer says, "Come on home." Here's Lonnie Smith's ah. throw, and he slides in safely. Sandberg takes second. Zimmer, the third base coach, puts everything together on this play. He knows the grass is slow. He knows the speed of Dernier off second base. He knows Lonnie Smith's throwing arm is not the strongest. And he just keeps Dernier coming in. When Lonnie Smith overthrew the cutoff man, Art Howe, Sandberg with his speed kept going. Look at the slide by Dernier away from the throw. Great coaching by Zimmer. Great base running by Dernier and Sandberg. The added team speed this Cubs team has. So Dernier and Sandberg again ignite the Cub attack. Good curveball for a strike to Gary Matthews. The game is tied at one. This is Sandberg now eight for his last 11 at bats. That's hot. He and Moreland have been smoking. In the dirt one and one. Durham is on deck. You know, Sandberg, you're looking at a second baseman. There's Durham, who's on a pace, and without the DH, you got the pitcher hitting in the nine spot. He's on an 80 RBI pace for the number two hitter. When Yount had that great year, the year they played the Cards in the series, remember he had a ninth place hitter who had a good year. I think Gatner had almost 300 that year. Two balls and a strike to Matthews. The whole line of philosophy is different in the American League, where in effect you have two leadoff men, the ninth man sometimes used as a leadoff man, as the White Sox do with Julio Cruz, the Brewers did with Gantner, and often your number two man is an RBI man. But in the National League, to have that high RBI total is an even more impressive feat. Here it is on two and one. Moves him away, and it's three and one. Center Allen just overthrowing a breaking ball. Stole second. Sandberg drove a 3 2 pitch through the hole into left field. Dernier scored ahead of Smith's throw with Sandberg taking second on the play, and now Matthews walks. Durham the batter, two on, nobody out of the game, tied at one in the last half of the first. Whitey Herzog sporting the crew cut. Looks like his 1959 baseball card now. Herzog talking about losing yesterday, picking up a half a game on the Phillies in the standings. So we need more off days. We might win this thing. Well, he's losing a doubleheader to the Pirates. Ball one to Durham. The Bull was slumping before the last couple of games. He was 0 for 17, then had a double Thursday against Pittsburgh. Two hits and an RBI here yesterday. This lineup is RBI deep. You go all the way down to Say in the number seven spot. He'll drive in 80 to 100 runs this year. Hit hard, but Green fields it. Goes to the bag himself as the runners advance. That's the first out. The tall grass slowed it down just enough. Green made a good quick start on it, though. His get ready position. Experiment. Hernandez left. And Hendricks at first base. Apparently, he's over. He's a good athlete right there. Started off well, David Green. Went into a tailspin, then went into the alcohol rehab program. It's coming back. Tough, tough battle. Right now, Porter with first base open. Talking about Marlin, who's red hot. He's got Davis, who may be a little bit more of a double play possibility, although he's swinging the bat well. Just getting the signal straight with Cinderella. Also, the switches of signs to clarify them with a the runner at second again. With the possible exception of Boa and, of course, the pitcher's spot, there isn't a soft spot in this Cub lineup. No, there isn't. And they can bring some bats off the bench. Red Hot Richie Hebner, Johnstone, Hassey. Ball one to Moreland with the infield back. Moreland had been platooning with Mel Hall before the deal. Now he'll get a chance to play pretty much every day. 
Dallas Green, Jim Fink's one of the executive here. Making some important trades. Controversial one recently with Cleveland. They have strengthened this ball club in every area. Bullpen, starting pitching. They get Sanderson and Ruthven back. They could cause a lot more trouble. He gets the curve over. It's one and one. Well, both Ruthven and Sanderson have been throwing before games, and they're optimistic about an early return. Sanderson with back problems. Ruthven had some surgery for a blockage in his right shoulder. Sandberg at third. Matthews at second with one out. And two and one the count to Moreland. Moreland attributes his recent hot streak, first of all, to playing every day, improving his confidence, seeing more live pitching instead of batting practice pitching. And also John Vukovic, the hitting instructor and first base coach, who changed a little bit in the sway, got him to shift his weight from the back foot to front foot, where he's driving the ball better. Here's your defensive alignment. And the 2 1 pitch. Taken high, three and one. Well, you know, Citarella's heart has to be pounding a little bit. First big league start. Classic ballpark like Wrigley. Standing room only crowd. His club has been struggling a bit. They need a lift. Now he's in a first inning jam against a good hitting ball club. Well, he threw it past him, three and two. So many times the style of pitcher that Citarella is early in the ball game on a strange mound coming out of the bullpen a control pitcher basically takes them a while to get their feet on the ground. Three two pitches popped up into shallow left field Ozzie Smith back Lonnie Smith in. Sandberg did not tag at third and Lonnie will run it back in after the catch. Usually a tricky wind here in Fenway. I'm Fenway in uh, Wrigley Field. Sunfield right now left field it'll move over as the game progresses late in the ball game will be showing in the right fielders eyes. We're setting on the roofs across the street. Is that Waveland out there. Waveland Avenue left field. And they're a little more alert when Jody Davis <laughs> comes to the plate. They chant his name out there on Waveland Avenue. He's provided as many souvenirs for them over the last couple of years as anybody. He's hit a huge percentage of his homers at Wrigley Field. Ball one to Davis. Davis, who last year tired during the heat with all the day baseball here. He actually played in 151 ball game. He caught 135 and parts of others in pinch hit. He went about six weeks without any home runs. And his RBI total dropped. That's where Hassey should help. He came over from Cleveland. 2 0 is the count. Cinderella went to three balls on four of the first five hitters. Every infielder now has come and had a few words. With Cinderella, Howe just came in, telling him not to let up. Two and zero. Oh. First base is open. Went with a breaking ball. Say would be next with the count three and zero. Oh. Now, when you've got experienced infielders like her, Ozzie Smith and Howe, or Say, it saves a trip out to the mound by the pitching coach Mike Rourke or Whitey Herzog. Swinging on the three zero oh pitch, Ozzie oh, gets there. Ozzie's Can he throw him out? Listen to the Cardinal fans and even very, very appreciative Cubs fans. Well, it could have been a whole lot worse for Cinderella. He gets out of it with only one run scoring. Coming up next, a great champion comes to a special Saturday edition of Sports World. And here's a preview. Well, with runners on second and third, it looked like when this ball left Jody Davis' bat, it was going to be a three-to-one ball game with the Cubs ahead. 
until the wizard, Ozzie Smith, with a little help from the tall grass with that quick start, acrobatic agility. He just robs a base hit, two RBIs from Davis. Marvelous, marvelous player, isn't he? I'll tell you, a great shortstop, which he is, some say the best of all time defensively, has got to want the ball in all situations, and he does. He never backs off, whether it's the ninth inning or the first inning. Tommy Hurst starts it for the Cardinals in the second against Trout and takes a strike. It was interesting, Bob, for those who saw the 82 World Series, Cardinals against the Brewers, how deeply Smith played against the Brewer ball club on the artificial surface. You could see on the dirt with the high grass, he was playing almost halfway even for a slow runner like Davis. Cut down the angle off the bat. There were fewer steps. Right through the wickets. And a leadoff single for Tommy Hur. You've been watching cricket lately? <laughs> well, you take a look at this replay if we have it. It splits the legs of Rainbow Trout for a leadoff single. Good follow through position. The glove in a good spot. But some people feel, in fact, Bruce Sutter before the game was talking about why he thinks the ball over the last few years is livelier. Not because home runs are going farther, he said, because more pitchers are getting hit, more good infielders are getting eaten up by ground balls that they used to catch, and pitchers can't react to baseballs hit back at them like that. The veteran Art Howe now, as her is chased back. A ball. A ball. Joe West down at first base calls a ball on Trout. Wonder if it was because of the step. It may have been. Trout wants to know what. He is saying, I believe, that your right foot went beyond, beyond the pitcher's rubber. Once your foot, your lead foot for left handed goes beyond to the outfield side of the pitcher's rubber, you've got to go home. You cannot go to first. And now Harvey is out explaining it to him. Watch the right foot. If that right foot went to the outfield side of the rubber, because the step was not too deceptive, he did not go too much toward home plate. It must have been the foot, the outfield side of the rubber. So a runner gets advanced to second on the ball. And ball one to Art Howe. Who will be taking at least a sh two shots to the opposite way, and he does this very well. A good role player, Art Howe. Play first base, pinch hitter for you. Play third base as he is today. And Joe McDonald, the GM, says he's just a good man of the ball club. He knows the game. He helps our younger players. Had some very good years for Houston. Batting averages around 300. Getting a 216 so far this year for the Cardinals. 2 0. Howe started his professional career very late, didn't he, with the Pirates? In fact, he was mid 20s or so, as I recall, and he went to a tryout camp where some of his friends playing Sandlot baseball says, You've got a chance. He said, All right. Spent a lot of time in the major leagues, hadn't he? Three and 0. Darrell Porter is the on deck hitter. Connors make a trip out. That's where Billy Connors wants Trout to miss. When he misses out of the strike zone, he wants him to miss low. So with the sinking action on his fastball, he'll get some hitters over anxious, will drive the ball on the ground. If he starts missing up toward the belt, he's in bad trouble. Billy Connors has had to be a psychologist with his pitching staff. Remember the Mets at one time? Confidant of Nolan Ryan, Tom Seaver. He studies this game, has done an outstanding job with his staff. Trout with that good sinker ball can turn a double play in a hurry. One, he's usually one pitch away from two outs. And he misses low to Porter, 1 0. Oh. Porter has been one of the more consistent hitters on this Cardinal ball club. He's hit the ball hard. Doesn't reflect this 260-some average. 
Tries to go the opposite way down the left field line and out of play. The book on Porter is pretty much that he's a dead pull hitter. But remember the ball he hit in game two of the World Series left against the Brewers? Corner. Off Don Sutton, as I recall, it really turned the series around because the Brewers were on the verge of blowing the Cardinals out. They'd won the first game 10 nothing or 10 to 2, something like that, and were leading in the second game before Porter came through with that hit. Get down towards second base and slowly they'll have to settle for the play at first as the runners move up. So already a couple of times in this ball game, we've seen the Cardinals team speed. Her leading that one. How with a good jump off first base, keep out of double play situation. How had to make a big decision right there. He could have waited, gotten in a rundown, but he decided to outrun Sandberg in the ball, caught in front of him where he couldn't tag him. So that did not allow Sandberg to get the lead runner at second. Cinderella had one major league at bat last year. This is his first in 84 as he taps it foul. Hallenier going through a series of signs down at third base. Always, of course, with one out. Got to be alert for a squeeze play from Herzog. What will happen is catcher Jody Davis, no matter what he puts down, if the runner breaks off third base, Trout's job is to knock the right-handed hitter down. Don't let him get the ball down. He got the outside corner and now Cinderella is in an 0-2 hole. Hal Lanier has been close to getting a few major league managerial jobs and someday he probably will Tony. The 0-2. Well he got a piece of it and bounces it over Say's head. There's no play and the Cardinals have a 2-1 lead. Boa went back to pick it up to prevent it from going to the outfield. Cinderella gets an infield single and her scores. Trout did just what he wanted to do, keep the sinker ball down, but instead of getting it caught in the high grass, he bounces it on the hard dirt service and was saved with two strikes, thinking, hey, what if they still decide to have a safety squeeze? Cut down his range a little bit. He couldn't get back, but Boa did save a run. Kept Howe at second base. Cinderella has to feel pretty good about things. He was really on the ropes just a few moments ago. Here's Lonnie Smith who fouls it off. Ozzie Smith bailed him out with a spectacular defensive play. Now he's able to help himself with a chop base hit. He was staring at a 3-1 deficit a few minutes ago, at least and maybe more. Now he's ahead 2-1. And that gets by Say. Howe is around third. Lanier waves him home and it's 3-1 St. Louis. Say playing well off the line. Still couldn't get the ball to his left. They've got the grass very, very high, especially on the left side for a specific reason. Bow and Say's range with age, natural deterioration, cut down considerably. So now Cinderella is at second, Lonnie Smith at first. Ozzie Smith the batter with one out and two already in at the top of the second. Cardinals not usually a team that scores one in bunches. They don't have the home run power of the Cubs. This one is foul ball for strike one. Very it's quickly Jim Fry's bullpen gets going. In fact, the Cardinals have scored two runs or less in 31 out of 70 games this year. We've got three across already today. One and one to Ozzy. Rich Barty begins to throw for Jim Fry. Jump misses two and one. We'll have to see with Cinderella, but this is the kind of thing that can give a guy a lift on the verge of being blown out, and suddenly 
an abrupt reversal. And he's sitting on top three to one, and it could become more. The change again, and a foul ball, two and two. Nice play by Hal Lanier. Trout missed the start with that injury to the finger. Did it swinging the bat, jammed it. Got some numbness in his finger for about a half a dozen days. I don't know if it'll affect the sinker ball or not. He asks for time. Willie McGee is on deck. Jammed him. We'll get another foul bat. ball. We'll get another bat, Ozzy. You're all the way up here. And look Trout. at that waist. He must have about a 27-inch waist. Let's see, did you see his? Uh, First game of the year this year, did he go out and do his uh, traditional flip before the first game and before that seventh game of the World Series when he did his back flip, double black flip, right behind the pitcher's mound before game seven of the World Series start against Milwaukee? He must have been some kind of tumbler when he grew up and went through high school. I've never seen anybody who can bounce up no. after the diving play and release a throw more quickly than Smith. The man is the greatest defensive showman since Willie Mays. And a shortstop, you get a lot more chances than a center fielder. 2 2 pitch with two on and one out. This is inside, and the count is full. The last time Trout faced the Cardinals, he went the distance here at Wrigley in April, beat them 6 to 1. Going. Misses ball four. The bases are loaded. Cinderella is at third. Lonnie Smith at second. Ozzie Smith, who has walked twice now, is at first. Well, after McGee, you've got the two big right handed hitters, Hendrick and David Green. So if Trout has a problem with McGee, could be it for him. Ball one to Willie McGee. So many of the players, you can see the top of the barrel of the bat by McGee, that hollowed out portion. Where they take a few ounces on the top. Hitters feel their bat is more balanced. Get more weight in the hitting area. Oh, this could be in there. Down the right field. By the time we get back, Bordy will be ready, and Steve Trout will be in the same position as the rest of you, watching the duration of this game on TV. George Hendrick takes a strike from Rich Bordy. The Cardinals have chased Steve Trout, lead it 6-1 to one with Willie McGee at third base, and still only one out of the top half of the second. Cubs in, fill in. Hit the short. Comes. That speed he's, he's coming got. home anyway. I'll tell you, that Ball team speed or something. Out. Hendricks had a medium speed ground ball on a good breaking pitch from Bordy. And McGee, the contact play was on. If there had been no outs, he might have held. With one out, you figure, well, as soon as the ball hits the bat, you take off running. He got a good walking lead, even though Bordy was pitching from the stretch. And Boa looked up, and McGee was already at home plate. Green is the ninth man to bat in the inning for the Cardinals. Strike one to it. Bordy's been somewhat unsung on this ball club. When Sanderson Ruthen went down. He moved into the starting rotation. He pitched very well. Long or middle relief out of the bullpen. Got some starts until they got Sutcliffe 
Cleveland. It's one pitching staff. You don't want to have a fight with that bullpen, do you? What's 46 7? Smith is about 6 5, and Stoddard is 6 7. Mm. Sutcliffe came down there to join yeah. them. Of course, he's in the starting rotation. He's about 6 7. Sandberg. Throws green out, but the Cardinals send nine men to the plate and score six times in the top half of the second. It ought to be a very relaxed Ralph Cinderella who takes the mound in the bottom half, leading seven to one. Well, at this point, it's the Cardinal fans among the sellout crowd at Wrigley Field who are doing the laughing. How some of them wish that the real Keith Hernandez was still wearing that number 37. One of the most controversial deals ever made in that city, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Some said that when Hernandez left, cut down George Hendricks' RBI production. Hernandez hitting in front of him with a high on base percentage. I know one thing, you'll never replace a glove like that at first base. He's as good as you'll ever see. And he's really done a job for the Mets. Had four hits for them the other day as they beat the Phillies 10 to 7. Made a couple of sparkling defensive plays. Now it's the Cubs who have to try and climb out of a hole, but they have plenty of time to do it. We're only in the last half of the second. 7 1 St. Louis. Say Boa and the pitcher spot. And strike one to Say. Well, Herzog would like to get at least five out of Cinderella because once he goes to his bullpen, this ball club's tough to overcome. The bullpen's been outstanding for Herzog. The greatest finisher this game's ever seen in Bruce Souter. Two quick strikes. You've got Neil Allen who can set it up for him. I'll tell you, the Cardinals going into the seventh inning in games they've been ahead, I think they've only lost one game all year. Doug Harvey doesn't like this and Say gets out of the batter's box and they're on him from the dugout. Harvey answering the Cubs dugout back. Jim Fry all over him. Harvey is about uh -huh. as authoritarian a figure uh -huh. as you'll find among Major League umpires. He won't take too much nonsense. He rarely raises his voice, but he makes his point. And the 0-2 pitch. Curveball got him looking. Say does something umpires don't like. He just lets his bat lie right in the batter's box. Watch Cinderella paint the outside corner. Outstanding pitching job on Say. He was in with a pitch with a fastball and he was right back out there on the black. Doug Harvey was involved in an interesting call earlier this year. Ninth inning, Lee Mazzilli tags up for the Pirates. Tries to score from third on a sacrifice fly with what would have been the winning run. Comes across. The Pirates are already celebrating. The Mets appeal at third, and Harvey says, Yeah, you left too soon. Pirates lost the game in extra innings. Chance to see Larry Boa with Larry Boa with his new glasses on. He's had them about a half a dozen games. He found that his vision of catching balls, he was reaching for balls, and they weren't there defensively. He wasn't seeing the ball. And today, with the bright sun, he's wearing a different kind of glasses that adjust. According to the light situation with this bright sun. Wow, this crew also is involved in another decision. Wasn't it Joe West, the first base umpire, who kicked out the, what, the, the camera crew or something in Shea Stadium? Said they saw somebody who showed a replay on the board that was somewhat controversial, which is taboo. Three and one now to Boa. Joe West. He's done about everything. He's Caught a robber, first snatcher, was it last year? Chased him down, held him for the police. Boa lifts it into short center field on the 3-1 pitch, and Willie McGee is there, two gone. And you're seeing two center fielders today who can cover a lot of ground in a hurry, and Bernier and McGee. Ooh. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Some people feel this center field is easy to play because it's shallow in the power alleys. I think it makes it tougher. You know, you'd make a long run and you can run into those concrete walls and into those vines. Forty bats for himself with two out and nobody on. 
Ball one to him. Despite of their big victory yesterday, the Cubs have been struggling. Some people in this city have been disappointed so often and talked about a June swoon. In this Eastern Division, the way Dallas Green's improved this ball club, they've got an outstanding chance to be in this thing in September. I think the team's going to win. It's like Philadelphia last year. They got hot in September. Their pitching staff got straightened out. That's what we'll do again this year. Ozzie from the outfield grass. Oh, is he sweet or what? Just another day's work. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Those flags, of course, beneath old glory, are aligned according to the standings in the National League. On the left, the National League East. On the right, the West. Padres are atop the flag on the right. The Mets in first place in the East. With the Phillies a game back, the Cubs trailing by a game and a half in the West. San Diego's lead is one and a half over Atlanta, four and a half over the Dodgers. A favorable pitcher's win. Keeps some balls in his ballpark. Now blowing almost dead in from center field off Lake Michigan. A ball and a strike to Tommy Hur leading off the third. He was the guy who started the six run second with a single to center. You'd have to put this double play combination of Ozzy Smith and her among the best. Whitaker and Trammell, of course. I tell you, he's playing great ball up in Toronto. Damaso Garcia and Alfredo Griffin. And yet they still have to say to themselves, what do we do with Tony Fernandez, the kid they've had on the farm at Syracuse? And he's ripe. He's ready to play in the big leagues. Now Bobby Cox has been working him in. Playing him a game here and a game there, trying to rest Griffin or when a little injury crops up. Little pop up, Boa chasing after it. It's trouble if it's fair and it's foul. Larry Boa, who has an incredibly high total for him of 10 errors this season. See why he went to the glasses? Boy, he had some years. What, one year on the turf in Veteran State in Philadelphia, he didn't make an error. The entire season at home. You talked about Toronto, the Blue Jays with the lead on Boston at 4 0. As a point of comparison, and this is meant to take nothing away from Boa, who was one of the game's best defensive shortstops over the past several generations. Last year, he led the National League in fielding percentage for shortstops at 984. He made 11 errors in 705 chances, playing in roughly the same number of games. And her hits one off the fists. Matthews will be there in left field for the first out. Playing in roughly the same number of games, Ozzie Smith had a slightly lower fielding percentage, 975. He made 21 errors, 10 more than Boa, but he handled 140 more chances. Ozzie Smith handled 844 chances last year. So nope. there is none more sure-handed than Boa, but nobody has the range of Ozzie Smith and makes as many plays. I, and I don't think Larry, even in his prime, nor any other shortstop that I've seen in a long, long time, maybe back to Apparition's prime, have had the range of an Ozzie Smith. That kind of quickness. That first step of Ozzie Smith, he is at full speed. He's become a much better offensive player than they ever felt. And Whitey Herzog had the bets with him. To keep us keep the strikeouts down to keep him popping the ball up and help them. He's driving the ball to that turf. One and one now to Art Howe. I still like Mark Belanger. Not better than Ozzie Smith, but as well as over 12 year period or whatever Mark played. Played on dirt and grass most of his career and didn't make too many errors. I bet Mark Belanger's happy representing the Major League Player Baseball Players Association office. The pack the drug prevention deal finally signed, sealed, and delivered. Here's Boa. And Howe is out. 
Coming up after baseball, we'll have a special edition of NBC's Sports World. Ten round battle between Eusebio Pedroza and Gerald Hayes. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, will be there. Live from Panama. They had some troubles with the site of that bout. They're going to switch it to Las Vegas. Now they're back in Panama. Pedroza against Hayes. After the baseball action today on NBC, strike one to Porter as Bordy took something off. Bordy will sink the fastball. He'll throw the slider. So while he go to that four seam fastball, he'll try and run it in on the fist. Porter has done some adjusting in his batting stance, hasn't he, Bob? I think way back, well, until a couple of years ago, he was much up, more up on the plate. Had the stance slightly open. He's he closed off, it a little moved bit. Moved off the plate, and I would think that he would probably take some pitches up the middle a little bit more than he did in the past. There's the change. The outfield bunches him toward the middle. Matthews gives him all of the line in left. Moreland gives him most of it in right. And they pinch in towards center field. So they play him straight away in the outfield or just about and play him slightly to pull in the infield. And he draws a two out walk. Now it's Cinderella, whose infield single back in the second inning might be the key hit in the game. Who knows? If Trout retires Cinderella and he had yep. him in an 0-2 hole, he might get through that inning. And mm -hmm. Cinderella might be an entirely different pitcher in a game that's one to one than with a seven to one score. Trout made the pitch he wanted to. Found it over Say's head. So you say to yourself, if this score holds up, well, Cinderella had a good day and Trout really didn't have it. But sometimes it's just these little things. You change one or two of them, and the entire direction the game takes is altered. Quickly 0-2. Durham down at first base. The catcher on base and the pitcher up hitting, playing behind the runner. Leon Durham back at home in his normal position, first base. Not a bad first baseman either. No, well, he isn't. He's really scooped a lot of balls out. And he is aggressive. He goes after balls. Then just hug the line like so many first basemen who have the bad reputations. Here's the one two. And Cinderella is a strikeout victim. For the Cardinals in the top half of the third, no runs, no hits. A walk and a man is left. After two and a half, it's the Redbirds seven and the Cubbies one. Bob Costas and Tony Kubek back at Wrigley Field in Chicago. In the other game NBC is televising today, Vin Scully and Joe Garagiola there in Atlanta through four innings. Fernando Valenzuela has struck out nine Braves and has a perfect game going. How about Dwight Gooden yesterday? Striking out 11 one more time. Eddie Libertar, the Dodgers scout, saying it's the best first-year pitcher he has ever seen. That takes a lot of territory, doesn't it? I was surprised when he said it last night as we were visiting with him. I said, even better than Fernando? He said, yeah, he impresses me as a first-year pitcher even more than Fernando Valenzuela. And Libertor is a Dodger scout, so if anything, he ought to be partial toward Fernando. That's what Cinderella has done so far. Very clever by the guys in the truck. Well, it might be a Cinderella story for Cinderella. Uh. A youngster who was not that highly regarded and no longer really is a youngster in baseball terms. 26 years old after toiling for a long time in the minors. Even a year that he had where he won 15 games in the minor leagues. His ERA was very high, almost five. Never been much of a strikeout pitcher. Never really had a good low walk total. Top of the order, and Dernier takes a strike. It's a man who triggered the one-run rally in the first for the Cubs. He single, Sandberg single. an inning where it looked like the Cubs would score more. Yeah, they are all over. Home plate umpire Doug Harvey. Dernier turns on him. Matthews on him. And Sandberg from the on-deck circle. And they're up to the front of the dugout. Ruben Amaro and Jimmy Fry. Nice warm day. We'll see how much Harvey takes. 
misses one and two and the fans get on Harvey saying hey that was nice of you calling a ball on a pitch in the dirt we appreciate it. Although Harvey has an excellent philosophy I think he said look it's easy to kick people out of ball games. My job is to keep guys in that people came to see them play nice breaking ball by Cinderella took a little bit off it. Cinderella records his second strikeout as we pause briefly for station identification on the NBC television network. Started to say that back in the first inning you mentioned that Dernier started a rally for the Cubs which accounted for only one run as it turned out. It looked like there's Dernier in the Cub dugout and looked like that would be a big inning for Chicago. They had a run in runners at second and third two out actually with one out they had runners at second and third and Cinderella induced Moreland to pop to shallow left with the runners holding and then Davis hit a 3 0 pitch up the middle Ozzie Smith made a great play on it retired him to end the inning and the Cardinals proceeded to score six in the top of the second Cinderella did the job he used his defense well and he did it on the four five and six hitters the RBI men Durham Moreland and Davis when he got him out of trouble. His breaking ball looks like it's coming along now. It's got a little more bite. May have been overthrowing it earlier in the ball game, and it seems to be breaking a little bit more. Two and one to Sandberg, who singled in the first. This could be another base hit. Uh -huh. Ozzie dives, but he has no play. There are a lot of shortstops with a figure. Why dive? I can't get up and throw anyway, but it's just a matter of I, I think his pride. It's so extreme, Ozzie Smith, that he just does not like to see a ball even get to the outfield grass. They feel, hey, even if I can't throw him out, I'm going to keep it inbounds. And then that dirt surface. Sandberg now is two for two today and nine hits in his last 12 at bats. Here's Matthews. Takes it high. Takes a little bit of the running game, something that they do better, this Cubs team. Down by that many runs, the running game's gone. Dernier may not run if he gets on. Durham may not run. Sandberg can steal bases also. Could be a double play ball. Ozzy, Tommy Herr, on to David Green, 6 4 3. And the Cubs are gone in the third. A hit, no errors, nobody left as a result of the double play after three, St. Louis seven, Chicago one. So back here at Wrigley, Bob Costas with Tony Kubek. Lonnie Smith led off the top half of the fourth by flying out to Dernier in center field, and with one out, Ozzie Smith is the batter, and the count to him is 0 2. Here's Bordy's pitch. Line shot just foul. Talked about Cinderella's hit in the second. That walk given up to Ozzie Smith in the second also kept the rally going, setting up that triple three RBIs by Willie McGee. Smith has walked twice and scored both times. This one fouled right back toward us. And a near souvenir for statistician Steve Horn, who neglected to leave the play to others just to his left. As he grounds it down to Durham, and he takes it himself for the second out. <laughs> Willie McGee now with two out and nobody aboard. Grounded out and tripled. Of interest to Cardinal fans, Ken Obergfell just singled home Dale Murphy. In the fifth inning in Atlanta for the Braves' first run off Fernando Valenzuela. Change up. Willie got a piece of it. 0 and 2. The principal guy the Cardinals got from Atlanta in the Obergfell deal. Left handed pitcher Ken Daly has been hit hard in both his outings as a Cardinal. They also got the veteran first baseman Mike Jorgensen, who has played some in a St. Louis uniform as well. 
This might make it through the hole. Boa can't flag it down and a two out single for McGee. Ken Daly trying to refine that curveball. He gets that curveball back. He's going to help this ball club. See that Danny Cox and he gets back. He's down in the minor leagues. Trying to straighten out his mechanics. The point should be due to get back pretty soon. This Cardinal team could be a completely different team with a strength in pitching starting staff the second half. Because I still think they're going to score runs. You look at this lineup today, they're capable of scoring runs. Hendrick wraps it to say. He'll go to Sandberg for the force. And that does it in the Cardinal fourth. No runs ahead and a man is left. And at the end of three and a half, the Cards lead the Cubs 7 to 1. Here's the ball, Leon Durham, to start it last half of the fourth, and a breaking ball from Cinderella for a called strike. Durham begins the day tied with Mike Schmidt for the National League leadership in RBIs with 52. This ball is hit right on the nose. Hendrick chasing it down. Durham will be content with a single. Extremely underrated right fielder. I guess George Hendrick, because of his taciturn nature, never really got his due until that World Series. <laughs> that won't make a cub friend either when he almost kept the cap. George Hendrick, who has a son just graduating from grade school, 13 years old, six feet six inches tall. Got another nine-year-old. George said he has already had feelers, who's six foot six inch, 13-year-old from two major colleges, They're just informally. He said, I want to be that kid's agent. Moreland now, he flied to left in the first. It's this one well. Smith is there and that's the first out Durham back to first well George Hendrick is quite a basketball fan an L.A. Laker booster He's very disappointed when the Celtics beat them for the NBA title so I'm sure he'd love to see his son excel in basketball and it looks like he's got a head start at 6 6 uh -huh. he said I'm still waiting for the little guy my nine year old to have his growth spurt now Porter doesn't like what he sees two pitches up in the strike zone two pitches hit hard so he's out to Cinderella to try and get him settled down and get the ball down. Trying to nurse him along so he can get to that bullpen. With two good finishers, Neil Allen and Bruce Souter. As you just saw on your screen, the Braves touched Fernando Valenzuela for two in the fifth inning. They tied that game with Los Angeles at two apiece. to Davis with say on deck. Into Not deep left center field. Back goes Willie McGee. And at the Ivy, he's got it. How different this park can be, huh? Yesterday we were out here, the wind blowing out to left field. It helped the ball out of the ballpark. And Moreland hit. A little left field porch out there. And today, Jody Davis just crushes one toward left center field, and the wind keeps it right in this ballpark. McGee feels he's hit the warning track. Then he feels that those vines have confused outfielders before visiting outfielders. You're reaching the, the wall's not there. He got that right hand, got back there in plenty of time. Say struck out on the second. Durham, who led off with a single, is still at first with two out now. And the curveball swung on and missed. The National League record for consecutive errorless games in one season at shortstop is Jim Davenport's 64. Say has played 57 straight without an error. Major League Mark, Don Money did it over in the American League in 1974 with the Brewers, 86 straight without an error. Art Howe, one third baseman throws out another. Cubs go out without scoring in the fourth. They had a hit and a man is left. It's still 7-1 St. Louis, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Ralph Cinderella walking along the bench. You just saw him a moment ago. He hopes he doesn't need this man, Bruce Souter, today. Cinderella on the long end of a 7-1 count as the Cardinals bat in the fifth. And ball one to David Green from Rich Bordy. Back one and one. 
David Green, some say may have been the key man when they got him over from the Milwaukee Brewers. He doesn't really have a home run swing. He's very strong, but he doesn't get a lot of loft. But he drives the ball well to right and left center field. Outstanding running speed. Nicaraguan born. And because of the tie in with Hall of Famer, the late Roberto Clemente, on that mercy mission when he went down on the plane, all the supplies for the hungry Nicaraguans, some have made the comparison with the throwing arm and the style of green to Roberto Clemente. Baseball, I guess there's a tendency, even for the most knowledgeable people, to make comparisons based on style and appearance and maybe on potential. But usually it doesn't pan out that way. They call Kirk Gibson in Detroit the next Mickey Mantle, and while Gibson's a good player, looks like he'll never quite measure up to that caliber of play. And David Green will have to go some before he deserves to fairly be compared with Roberto Clemente. Full count. But isn't that one of the charming things aspects of this game where a hitter gets up to the plate and you look at the feet and the way the bats cock and the stance and the way a guy swings or throws or fields a ground ball and the inevitable comparisons. So many other sports you can't do that. Mm -hmm. it's constant action of basketball or hockey or 22 guys in a relative bunch in football in the middle of the field. You are exposed in this game and it's like golf. It is a very humbling sport. Payoff pitch, and we'll do it all over again. Yeah, this is definitely the game that calls forth the individual. Everybody has their moment in the spotlight. Can't get too high and can't get too low over 162, can you? Comes back to haunt you. Up the middle, and Boa won't get to it. That's a base hit for David Green. Dernier bobbles it, and Green heads for second. That's his first error in over 100 ball games, 103. I think Green forced that error. He took such a wide turn when he really had no reasonable chance to get to second if the ball was handled cleanly. And watch, see if Dernier doesn't look up at Green for just a second before he fully has control of it. He's looking back at him, and he kicks it. And another one of Clemente's trademark, you can still see him, I'm sure, rounding first base and coming into that slide halfway between first and second when the outfielder fielded it cleanly, then he doubled back to first. So a single and an error, and here's her. Strike one on the foul ball. Look how much better the Cardinals have done away from Bush Stadium in terms of offense nearly 50 points higher on the team batting average and better than a run a game more on the road. Dernier had play, played 107 consecutive games without an error until that one. Oh and two. Well we were here a week ago. Cubs taking on the Phillies and the Phil scored five in the first went on to win it eight to two. This time the Cubs find themselves trailing seven to one to the Cardinals who scored six times in the second so early blowouts have been the trend for the Cubs on national TV of late. Phillies started somewhat of a slide the part of the Cubs when they swept the Cubbies in this ballpark. A called third strike to Tommy Herr as Doug Harvey punches him out of there. Those you don't mind if, in fact, it was out of the strike zone when you're ahead by this many. Look at where Jody Davis sets up. Right where he wanted it, outside part of the plate. Bordy runs the fastball away. Talking about the Cubs' lack of success the last couple of times they've been on TV, there are those who believe in jinxes who will point to the fact that the Cubs after their fast start suddenly wound up on NBC three or four times in the space of a month on the cover of the sporting news on the cover of Sports Illustrated and almost immediately began to tail off. All one to how. You are not one of those superstitious people who believes that are you certainly not I was merely explaining the point of view of a few misguided individuals. Yeah. 
1 0 to Howe. Down to Say. Looks green back and throws Howe out. The two things Ron Say has always had very, very sure hands and a very accurate throwing arm. And in spite of the man, the nickname of the Penguin, Tom Lasorda, says you think of him not having the, a lot of speed. But Ron Say at one time was a very good runner. I'm not talking about a blazer. They covered a little more ground now. They're playing on a pretty rocky infield in Los Angeles. And one thing he's here for is to drive in runs. After a slow start last year, Say ended up with over 80 RBIs. Some people were about to bury him. Yeah, this year, Say's average is low, but his power stats are respectable. He's got 10 homers. And he's driven in 40, although his batting average is under 240. He is one of those who down through the years has disproved the value of a high batting average. You want run production. Ron says always given it. Forty misses high with the change. It's 2-0 to Porter. And now they're just going to walk him. They'll go ahead and throw the other two outside and pitch to Cinderella. City Royals 1979 he walked 121 times had 112 RBIs and he scored 101 runs here that he hit 291 there are outstanding numbers for a catcher to score that many times strike one swinging to Cinderella he doesn't look like the greatest hitter in the world but it was that single he chopped back in the second inning over Say's head. It was a big part of a six run Cardinal outburst. They lead it 7 1. 0 oh 2. And you can bet that if he does pick up the win in this ball game, the thing you'll want to talk about is his RBI single. Dizzy Dean would love it. He might owe Ozzy Smith a dinner as well. Uh, 1 and 2. Pitchers don't like anything coming to the plate with a little spin on it, whether it breaks or not. If it's spinning, it looks like that snake, he'll back off. Cinderella barely gets a piece of it. You notice with a lot of pitchers, especially those that don't bat very often, they're already ready to bail out in their stance, the way they're positioned. They're set to take that step in the bucket almost right away. Not too many will crowd the plate. A called third strike. Forty fan two in the fifth. The Cardinals leave a couple on and lead it seven to one after four and a half. Good. Larry Boa was part of that Philadelphia club back in 1971. Rick Wise threw that no hitter against the Reds. How he comes, leads off for the Cubs in the last of the fifth. Excuse me, Bob. How comes up tight at third, and they've shifted the defense around. They moved the left fielder in. Smith, there's how up tight. Playing Larry to slap the ball the opposite way. Many times they'll pitch him away and play him away. Whitey Herzog, one of the only managers I know who keeps his own charts. Every ball game, he said, it keeps my mind fresh. I take the pitching chart, where the what was thrown, where the ball was hit and put it in myself so that I can realign the defense the way I want it. Two balls and a strike to Boa. The Dodgers have scored three times in the top half of the sixth at Atlanta and lead the Braves now five to two. Five two L.A. over Atlanta. Three and one. So pinch hitter will be next. Jay Johnstone is in the on-deck circle. He'll bat for Bordy. Johnstone. 
Little tapper towards second base. Her in quickly, and the flip to Green retires Bowen. One of the best, even after three knee jobs, arthroscopic surgery on his knee during the offseason again. Some felt that after the second knee operation, Tommy Hurd tried to come back a little too quickly. It may be a year before he gets all his quickness back, but he has to re-strengthen all those muscles. Johnstone is the pinch hitter, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. have quieted down since the second. Line drive, and even Ozzy can't get this one. A pinch hit single for Johnstone. Cards got one in the top of the first. Cubs came back with one in their half. The Cardinals scored six in the top half of the second. Nothing but zeros on the board since then. Before the ball game, there's Dickie Knowles. He'll be the new pitcher for the Cubs when they take the field. Before the ball game, Jay Johnstone was starting to rile up the bleacher bums in left field. And some of the Cub people standing around the batting cage started thinking back to 69 when Dick Salma did it out of the bullpen. And Ron Santo, after every victory, was running out to left field, clicking his heels. Bill DeRocher just couldn't seem to get that team over the hump. Of course, the Mets got awfully hot, too, didn't they? Dernier is one for two. He takes a curveball for a strike. Those two clubs passed in 1969 like two ships in the night. There never really was a race. The Mets were down by nine. They caught the Cubs going in one direction while the Cubs were plummeting down. And they wound up winning it by eight or nine. Good punt by Dernier. Howe will never get it. Howe was playing even with a bat. But Dernier never tipped it off to the last split second. Watch Dernier. What you look for in a third baseman is that right hand to slide up the bat. It's a little more difficult for a third baseman to see it because Dernier disguised it so well and his body was between the bat and Art Howe, the third baseman. And that's the thing that Richie Ashburn, Phillies broadcaster, worked on with Dernier. They tried the switch hitting experiment, Pat Corrales. They thought that failed. Ashburn had him under the stands at Veterans Stadium all winter. He said, look, you've got to choke up on the bat. You've got to be a spray hitter. Can't swing from the air. Look at the jump in Sandberg's slugging percentage. He's not only upped his average, but he's driving the ball like never before this year. Suddenly the homers and the doubles and triples are part of his act and he's among the league leaders in slugging percentage. He's two for two today a pair of singles. Two on one out. And it gets away from Porter. He can't find it. The runners move up. Porter tried to smother it but that breaking ball. You see the right hander's curveball with a spin on it. Right hander's curveball. And looking at it from the catcher's viewpoint with all these bounce or usually bounce to the left. Porter tried to smother it, but it hit a pot of dirt and scoot it away. Probably a wild pitch. Maybe a telltale sign that Whitey Herzog sees that Cinderella is starting to try and overthrow and maybe tiring. And they're going to get that pin going. The one out of Sandberg. Two balls and no strikes. We're still checking to find out whether officially that's called a wild pitch or a pass ball. Our guess is a wild pitch. Matthews is on deck. Sandberg asked for time. Durham would follow Matthews if they keep the inning alive. Two balls and a strike now. Dave Van Olen begins to throw down to the bullpen. Herzog has three left-handers he can use out of the pen, although Ken Daly pitched a lot yesterday. Got Dave Rucker over from Detroit, and Dave Van Olen's now up. Alan Lottie and Suter from the right side of the pen. Ozzie Smith throws.
throws Sandberg out. Johnstone crosses the plate at 7 to 2, and Dernier moves on to third with two out. He has the quickest first step of any shortstop I've ever seen, Bob, no matter which direction he's going. That's why he always seems to get a good hop. That's what's happened in this ballgame, 7 2. Ozzie reads hops off the bat as well as anybody. Watch out quickly. This ball hits in the dirt, and he has already started. If he lays back on the ball, he might get an in between hop. I don't think that's something you can teach, but he does practice. He works on it an awful lot. Matthews has walked and grounded into a double play. Takes high for ball one. Foul back one and one. Cinderella needs to retire one more man in this inning to officially qualify to be the winning pitcher. 7 2 St. Louis, last half of the fifth. Man at third, two out. Curveball misses. Former Red Sox skipper Don Zimmer. Averaged about 93 wins up in the little bandbox, Fenway Park. In San Diego, Texas Rangers for a while. He'd like to manage again someday. The right job comes along. Art Howe can't handle it. Dernier scores, and Matthews heads for second, and he's in there. It's 7-3. to three. We saw the Gary Matthews trademark, didn't you, that he learned from Willie Mays. As soon as he left the batter's box, the helmet was on. Scored as a double. Breaking ball that Cinderella got inside. Howe was giving Matthews a lot of the left field line. Lonnie Smith over in a hurry, but Matthews cuts the bag well. He made that double between home plate and first base. Ran hard all the way, the Sarge. Batting average going in about 270. There's Neil Allen with the curveball sign. He's loosening up in a hurry. Old Van Olin has sat down. Well, Herzog would like Citarella to get the win, but one swing of Durham's bat could bring the Cubs within two. He got under it, and this should end the inning. Lonnie Smith says, I'll take it. And he does. The Cubs scored two in the last half of the fifth inning and closed to within 7-3 after five at Wrigley. Of course, if your team loses, it doesn't hurt quite as much if you don't have to pay for your ticket. 7-3, cards lead the Cubs after five. Coming up after baseball, 10-round junior lightweight bout. Title on the line, Eusebio Pedroza versus Gerald Hayes. Marv Albert and Ferdy Pacheco to call it. After baseball today on NBC. Gerald Hayes, I guess that'd be an upset if he beat Pedroza, wouldn't it? Because he's done it before. Didn't he defeat WBC featherweight champ Juan Laporte back in 83? You thought I knew that off the top of my head. I really read it off this promo sheet that was handing me. I was amazed. <laughs> Dickie Knowles. He was projected to be one of the starting pitchers for this Cubs team coming out of Arizona. Boy, he has struggled. He's not striking out many, and he's walking more than he's striking out. It's going to struggle back for Knowles. Lonnie Smith is 7 for 10 lifetime against Knowles, his former Philadelphia teammate. Hit this one off the fist. Gary Matthews called off by Bob Dernier, who makes the catch. Dernier, who very quickly has learned to take charge of this outfield, and I'm sure he learned an awful lot watching the Phillies' great center fielder Gary Maddox all those years, playing behind him. Ozzie Smith, who has turned around about left-handed, first against Porty and now against Knowles after Trout, the left-hander, was knocked out in the second, takes high for a ball. Slapped 
into the cup dugout. Ooh. Sends them scattering in there. It's got to be a towel class pretty soon, isn't it? That's the traditional sign. We surrender. No, Cubs aren't in a good mood today. Knowles always had a good fastball. The trouble controlling the breaking stuff. It's only for strikes. You can see how that fastball runs. Billy Connors has tried to get him to, I don't want to use the expression, turn the ball over, but go with a two-seam fastball as Say comes up as he tries to bunt. He does. There it is. Say bare hands and throws, and he beat it out. It may have been because Jordan was off the bag, trying to cheat a little bit. Say read it well. Only chance he had was the bare hand. He did it. Couldn't get a whole lot on his throw. May have bounced off the plate where Ozzie got that little bit extra high hop. Durham cheats inside. If he was drawn off, he decided to cheat to try and get a call. That first step from the left side, so important. It's, well, Rod Crew calls it like a walk in the park. Left foot over right, walk directly toward the pitcher. Don't pull off the plate too soon or you leave the outside corner. Willie McGee showing signs of snapping out of his slump. He's hit 350 over his last 10 games. Takes inside and low for ball one. He's two for three today, including a three-run triple in the second inning. Ozzie Smith at first with one out on the top of the sixth. One and one to Willie. Look at McGee's walk till he has 15 on the year going into today's game, which doesn't sound like a lot. Remember, all 83 only got 26. Two, he got just 12. <laughs> About 450 plate appearances. We've said it before, one of baseball's most overlooked and most important statistics, walks and on-base percentage. Well, that's where Gary Matthews is so outstanding. Matthews has never really walked a whole lot in his career in the major leagues. He'd walk 60 times. He's in the mid-40s already for the Cubs, so a 268 batting average doesn't reflect the on-base percentage. The true worth of the Matthews hitting in that three spot, keeping things going. Going. There goes Ozzie Smith, and the pitch gets away from Davis. Ozzie thinks about going to third, but stays at second base. That's one of those times where the middle infielder, when the ball gets by the catcher like that, where you don't do yourself a favor to tell the base dealer to stand up. They said, stand up, it's by him. But if you do that sometimes, you allow Smith, although he couldn't this time, you allow him to take the extra base, but Jody Davis pounced on the ball very quickly. I'd imagine that was a pass ball that went off his glove and didn't hit the dirt. Jody Davis catching has improved tremendously this year with the help of Johnny Oates, bullpen coach. 2-1 pitch oh. is drilled to very oh, deep right. Moreland for a look, but it is gone. Willie McGee is 3-4 for four with a single, a triple, and now a home. Still see those home runs Willie McGee hit. Postseason play in the Cardinals championship year, and there were similar kinds of pitches. Left-handed, balls down and in. I want to correct something. We we're talking about a pass ball. And Joey Davis, of course, is a stolen base. Smith didn't advance to third, so there's no pass ball or wild pitch given on that. And just correct that. Stolen base for Ozzy Smith before the home run by Willie McGee. And what for a, a, a frail-looking guy? He can generate a lot of power if the pitch is in his zone, can he? Ask Pete Vukovic about it. Mm -hmm. He touched him for two in game three of that World Series. Back in 82. Became, as I recall, only the third rookie ever to hit two homers in a World Series game. One was Charlie Keller and the other was Tony Kubek. Hendrick draws a walk on four straight pitches. Mike McGee, you had your two homer performance at Milwaukee in a series between the Yankees and Braves. That had to be satisfying for you because that's your hometown. 
more so from a father. Or as much so, he played professionally for the old Milwaukee Brewers in the mid 30s. Next Saturday, either the Braves or the Mets or the Yankees versus the Royals. Bob and I will be in Kansas City. Joe Gargiola, Vin Scully, be at Shea Stadium. The Cardinals lead the Cubs 9 to 3, which was yesterday's final, with the Cubs winning. Cubs won 9 3 yesterday. Reversed here in the top half of the sixth. Cubs have their bullpen going again. One and one to David Green. Warren Brewster. Another former Philly. Green lofts it in the shallow right. Moreland coming on. Look at the sun. And Keith has it. Sun in the wind, and Moreland had the glasses down and had to battle them both. A U of Texas product, Keith Moreland. Miss if we didn't mention a great great college coach Cliff Gustafson He's turned out a lot of fine players. Tommy Hurst single to start the six run second. Since then he's flied out and struck out. Two outs Hendrick at first and ball one. Got the corner one and one. Cardinals, we've talked about it before, not much of a home run team. Team with the lowest total of home runs in the National League, Houston with 21 before today. Cardinals were tied with the Pirates before this ball game, each of for second last in the National League in home runs. Each of them had 29. Well, the homer by McGee was the Cardinals' 30th, and to give you an idea of how Bush Stadium affects power hitters. 21 of the 30 Cardinal home runs have been hit on the road, only nine at home. Line drive almost took Knoll's head off. Hendrick will stop at second as Dernier plays it back in, and Hur is now two for four. Otto pop Jim Fry. Now this is the lineup with a little bit of platooning maybe at third base, Andy Van Slyke and Howe against certain left-handers that Whitey Herzog would like to stick with all year long. Because this is his best all-around team with the balance from the left and the right side. Combination of speed, outstanding defensive team, especially on the turf. So Bruce Joe come in. Knowles departs, Brewster enters, and we'll be right back. Warren Brewster will make his 18th appearance all in relief on the year. See his numbers. It's pretty much in middle, middle short relief. Sinker baller, little slider, doesn't throw hard. Like to keep the ball low or as tall grass can catch it. Art Howe, the first man to face him. Ball won the count. Hendrick at second, her at first. Two outs and two in in the top half of the sixth. 9 3 St. Louis. Yeah. One and one. Cardinals with a rough stretch. They go out to the West Coast, I think before today, 17 games before the All Star game, 14 around the road. Herzog would like to get through that, playing at about a 500 or better pace. Get his pitching staff, starting staff shaped up. This Cubs team has given them fits this year, haven't they? Cubs have won seven of the first ten games between these two teams. There's the one two to Howe. A called third strike on the breaking ball. But on the second homer of the year by Willie McGee, the Cards tack two more on the board, lead at 9-3 after five and a half at Wrigley Field. A few years ago in Kansas City, this man found himself trapped in a monumental problem. He wrote a book about it. We asked him why. 
Well, Tony, I wrote the book because uh, I know that there's a problem in America today with drugs and alcohol really all over the world. And I've tried to really direct it to the youth of America and, and just uh, show them uh, exactly what drugs and alcohol did to me. I'm really not trying to preach to anybody in the book, but I want them to show the negative effects that drugs and alcohol can have on a human being. He has come back from that, hasn't he? problem that is a societal problem, not just an entertainer's problem or the entertainment field, which some people consider ball players to be. And I like the approach that the commissioner's office, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn, has pioneered that program has taken. They are no longer trying to beat people on the head. They're showing some compassion. Yes, there is discipline involved. They're trying to rehabilitate human beings from aftercare. Strike one to Moreland leading off the last half of the sixth. They'll be followed by Davis and Say. The Cubs are in a six run hole. 9 3 St. Louis. Look out. Look out. That was just a breaking ball or a change up that somehow squirted out of his hands. Well, if it hit him, it wouldn't have hurt. Our producer Ken Edmondson loves this angle, the Citarella story. <laughs> it's being made into a Broadway musical. Far too many balls for him to be thrown. He's gotten away with well, some pitches. Jody Davis sitting the ball into the wind, right to the wall that McGee pulled down. He's Two one pitch now to Moreland. He's had some help from his friends defensively, hasn't he? Ozzy Smith, namely. Three and one the count. Still too early for Suter. Not too early for Neil Allen. Or maybe Jeff Lottie, although Lottie pitched yesterday. Lead off walk for Moreland. And now Mike Rourke, the pitching coach. Makes the walk out to talk to Cinderella. Mike Rourke, a marvelous story. He was out of baseball for two years. He knows that Bruce Souter split fingered fastball. Taught to Souter when he was a member of the Cubs by the late Fred Martin. Souter hurt his arms. Neil Allen over from the Mets. Throws hard with a good curveball. Tried him in the starting rotation for a while. He's been setting up ball games for Souter, but Rourke came out of retirement. Hub Kittle, pitching coach for this team for a number of years, kind of in semi-retirement, I guess, roaming the minor leagues. He's a low-key guy, spent some time catching for the Tigers, spent some time managing in the minor leagues. Now the chant of Jody, Jody begins here at Wrigley Field. It's not your best Cary Grant impersonation you just did. That was Judy, oh. not Jody. <laughs> well, you're oh. a piece of work, you know that? You're like a fish, you get hooked so easily. Davis drove McGee to the wall in left center field as Willie hauled down his long drive back in the fourth inning. Cubs bullpen in action once again. Showed to the Cardinals a while ago. A one pitch. Two. The Cubs have managed seven hits and three runs off Cinderella in five innings plus. Moreland walked to start the sixth. on his breaking pitch. It's a hard curve ball, maybe a little bit too hard early in the ball game. Excellent motion. Never changes his arm speed or his motion when he takes something off the curve ball and boy, he had a perfect spot also. Cinderella has fanned three. He's walked only two despite the fact that he's gone to three balls on many hitters. He's thrown a lot of pitches as Tony Kubek mentioned earlier. Say is 0 for 2. Oh, hit him. That's spot 2. Right on the hand. 
Johnny may not even go down to first base. He'll be very, very solid. And a fastball in to move him off the plate. It could be a bad one. I say his reaction as Tony Garofalo comes out, the trainer, along with Jim Fry. Just trying to keep Say off the outside part of the plate. He runs a fastball, and you can see Ronnie not reacting quickly. He may have been looking for a breaking ball or something away. Let's pause briefly here for station identification on the NBC television network. While they're tending to say Whitey Herzog is going to make a double switch, Art Howe was the last man to bat in the sixth inning. Andy Van Slyke is going to go in and replace him at third base, and Van Slyke will bat ninth. Citarella, who stands to be the winning pitcher, leaves the game, and he'll be replaced by Neil Allen, and Allen will bat in the seventh spot in the order. So those who say that the DH does not preclude any strategy, Take that move right there, a double switch. You don't see it in the American League. Along with a few other things. The strategy of judgment, when to take a pitcher out, not extend them too long. Neil Allen. Heard Bruce Souter, if you're with us, in our pre his pregame commentary, how good this bullpen's been. Allen, three wins, one loss. His 25th ball game, 25th appearance. While Allen gets warm, we have a chance to break away. The Cardinals lead at 9-3. The Cubs have two on with one out in the sixth. Allen got ready quickly. We missed a couple of pitches. We apologize for that. There you see his numbers for this season. The count is 1-1 one and one to Larry Boa. Richie Hebner is in the on-deck circle. To bat for Bruce Starr. 2-1. Cardinals bullpen. 19 saves. You just saw the three. Neil Allen has registered this year. Guess who's got the other 16? Bruce Souter leads the National League in that category. The 2 1. Fouled off and out of play. Allen can have this tendency to get a little wild and walk some people. He's walked 21 and 53 and two thirds, but. He's got the curveball or the fastball. He can use a strikeout pitches. He's also struck out 34. Full count. A walk to Moreland and a hit batter. It was Say who was hit by the pitch. Have put two on with one out. And now the count is full to Boa. In between Moreland's walk and Say being hit, Davis struck out. And he walks Boa. The bases are loaded. Don't get doubled off on a line drive. Make sure the ball hits the ground first. Whitey Herzog checking the lineup card. See who Jim Fry's got left that he may send up. Just send up Rich Hebner. Good low ball hitter, Hebner. One time he was a dead pull hitter. Now he'll shoot the ball the opposite way on occasion. Like they're playing him a little bit over toward left center field. McGee in center. Takes high. Out comes Mike Rourke. Try and get Allen down in the strike zone. Hebner pinch hitting. He's a home run, three RBIs. He's six for 18. And overall, 368 as he's also played a little bit of third base. Ron Say has been bothered off and on by a groin pull the past several weeks. What's he telling him? I'm trying to read Mike Rourke's lips. Jeff Lottie now pops up in the bullpen. He was in the ball game yesterday. Uh, the old hat thing that 
when a pitcher's high in the strike zone, that pitching coaches have always said, or you hear out yell from the bench, is bend your back. I don't know how you pitch when you bend your back. It's kind of one of those old hat expressions, but he's trying to get the ball down for some reason. I don't know what that was, pointing to his cheek or face. I'm not sure. Last of the sixth, bases loaded, one out. Cubs trail by six. Hepner has four career grand slams. Two and oh. Okay, if he had one to right field, he'd have to crush it because that wind's blowing in the gale. Have to be alive. This not. might drop in. Hendrick coming on. Make the catch or not. Moreland scores. It's nine to four, and the bases are still loaded. I'll tell you whose judgment was outstanding on that. He could not get help from the coach. It was Larry Boa down in first base because he had to read this play perfectly and react. You could see the ball short up Hendricks' glove. Her picks it up and says, Hey, I make it Boa on a force out at second base. So Boa had to react. He went halfway. If he was caught, he would have had to get gotten back to first. He saw it hit, he scooted the second. Very, very smart base running, prevented the force out. Now Dernier, who's two for three, singled and stole a base in the first, struck out in the third, beat out a butt in the fifth. Strike one call on the fastball. Coaching box. Sandberg is on deck. 1 1 pitch from Allen to Dernier. Down the third base line and a fair ball, extra bases. Two runs will score. Hebner winds up at third. It's a double for Dernier. And it's 9 to 6. Side, and he turns just a little bit to get it by him. And Ozzie Smith was talking about that before the ball game. Obviously, it's just a tough staff because we've changed so much to play behind defensively. You can't position because we've had such a turnover in this staff. All one to center. He's two for three. It's high run at the plate. Matthews on deck. He's gone. Hello, cut off. They get him at second. They do. Van Slyke cut it off and got Sandberg at second. But two runs scored. It's nine to eight. have scored five in the sixth. Oh and two to Matthews and the two guys who ignite their yep. attack Dernier and Sandberg are a combined six for eight. They're each three for four.
one two pitch now to Matthews. Did he hold up. He didn't. Porter couldn't handle it so he had to put the tag on him. Those two also have six RBIs between them Dernier and Sandberg. We've got ourselves a ball game. It's 9-8 after 6. They're rocking at Wrigley, and we're coming back after this from your local station. Here's what happened on the base hit by Sandberg to Lonnie Smith. With men on second and third. Van Slyke in proper cutoff position. He's the third baseman. Porter, as you saw, may have been yelling. As the runner skids across home plate to cut it off and get Sandberg, who's heading for second base. That was the important run, the tie run they kept out of scoring position. He erased it completely. Good execution. Whitey Herzog teams are usually very fundamentally sound teams. Tim Stoddard is the new come pitcher. And Porter greets him with a drive to right, but Moreland is there, and it's the first out. The Cardinals have had leads of 7 to 1 and 9 to 3. It's 9 8 now, top of the seventh. In the five run, Cubs sixth, they really hit only one ball hard, Tony. They had two walks, a hit batter, a bloop single by Hebner in a pinch hitting roll, a double by Dernier down the line, which was really a ball he hit off the fist, but Van Slyke didn't think he'd pull Allen and had him played way off the third base line. And the only ball that was hit on the nose, the two run single by Sandberg. Stoddard, who has refound that slider he had a few years ago in Baltimore, which makes that fastball look much harder, having a nice year. Two Man. saves, four wins, one loss. And Slikes first at bat. Replaced Howe at third base on a double switch, and inning a go. One and one to it. And like Neil Allen does so well, usually for Bruce Souter, this man Stoddard sets up ball games for the Cubs and Lee Smith in short relief. Like it'll be out of play, and it is. Hasn't fared Not too good. well, huh? Not recently. No. Nope. Fry has watched his club get back into it. One run ball game now. One two pitch to Van Slyke. This is high two and two. Van Slyke has started at five different positions this year. First base, third base, all three outfield spots. Coming up after baseball, the fight, Eusebio Pedroza versus Gerald Hayes from Panama. Right after baseball on NBC. And he pulled up. Off no, he's a strikeout. Up. Bob Davidson down at third base. Says that Van Slyke went far enough around. And Van Slyke coming into his own and Dave Green coming off the rehab program a reason for the Obergefell deal took something off a breaking ball. Ooh, I don't know. I don't either. Looked to me like he checked I've it. Said this often this year in our telecast that more often than not in fact almost all the time on any kind of check swing situation umpires are calling strikes punching guys out more than I've ever seen it. I don't know if there was a directive came from the Lake Cullen supervisor of umpires in the National League or what just maybe it appears that I have. Well, it's Stoddard's job to keep the Cubs as close as they are within one run. He's retired the first two. The count is one and one to Lonnie Smith. Two and one. Stoddard and Smith with a little friendly competition going on. So you can go out there and throw the hardest. Stoddard doesn't throw as hard as Smith. He's helped out a lot more lately. He's been put in some situations because Smith has had a little pull side muscle. Do the fans get into it here or what? Lee Smith waiting if they get a lead or a tie if he's needed. Oh, they really do. And they're so close to you. That's an important part. You reach out and touch the players. Not many parks like that left. Tiger Stadium, Fenway. Off-speed pitch missiles and the count is full. that Bill Beck had something to do with. I think he was one of those as a young kid helped build that scoreboard in center field and carried a lot of the equipment some of the bricks. Smith draws a two out walk a threat to run he swipes 16 this year. 
Tim Stoddard, of course, was a member of the 1974 national champion North Carolina State basketball team, which featured David Thompson, Monty Tao, Tom Burleson. He played a forward spot for them. Started a little slow in his delivery to home plate, so it might allow Lonnie Smith to get a good jump. Hebner in on the grass. Lonnie bunted for a base hit his last time up, or Ozzy, I should say, bunted for a base hit his last time. Let's see if Ozzy takes at least one pitch to try and give Lonnie Smith a chance to get in scoring position. There he goes. Slip. He Slip. bluffs the bunt. Here's Davis's throw. Skips into center field. Smith continues to third, and Janier won't throw. Number 17 for Lonnie, and he didn't have a very good jump. His feet gave way, and they call him skates. A lot of slipping and sliding, and when he took that first step, watch his left foot. Didn't really have good traction, but then he accelerated. The ball's there without the bad hop, without the hop. I've always felt this is a ball that any middle infielder has got to stop. An error will be charged to Jody Davis, but middle infielder's got to get in front of that ball and knock it down, take it in the chest or any way he can. Yes, it does hurt. Now Hefner's forced to come way in in case Smith tries to score. Smith from third with the drag button. Oh, and two is the count. Cubs have made a couple of errors today. And each was occasioned by the speed of the Cardinals. They were forced into both miscues. Smith strikes out swinging. So Lonnie Smith is left at third as Ozzie Smith fans a 9-8 ball game. And if you can hear us over the din, we're bringing you another edition of Seventh Inning Stretch. Fans here at Wrigley have just been serenaded by Harry Carey singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game during the seventh inning stretch. And some of the more creative patrons have stuffed those soda and beer cups into the fence to spell out NBC and Cubs. Number one down the left field line. We appreciate it. Here is Durham to start the seventh. He's one for three. Allen delivers a drive to right center field. Not into McGee that and Hendrick on the run. And short of the track, Willie McGee will take it. I'll tell you, we didn't expect the slugfest in this ballpark today because of the wind blowing in. And two balls have already been hit. One by Jody Davis and this one by Durham that on most normal days were out in the streets or maybe in the street. The wind just kept it in, and that man has gotten up now in the Cardinals' bullpen. There's the wind blowing in straight off Lake Michigan from right field. Here's Moreland. His walk started the five-run sixth. It takes up and in from Allen for ball one. Herzog won't wait too long if Allen gets in trouble. He's got Suter up. Breaking ball for a strike. There's Suter in the pen. And a called strike. One and two to Moreland. Bruce Suter could become a free agent after this year. I don't know if his agent, Cardinals Brass, are talking. He went fishing for the curveball and fans. Say out of the game, the pitcher's spot is the seventh place in the order, so Stoddard is in the on deck circle. But if Davis reaches, Stoddard won't bat. All one. You know, when you're trying to protect a one run lead at Wrigley, and you've got to face Sandberg, Matthews, Durham, Moreland, and Davis, each of whom is a very legitimate home run threat. That lead is in the balance on every pitch. You know, the thing what happens with a team like the Cubs, and, I, and Jimmy Fry is more aware of it than anybody, I'm sure, is even a victory, if they should come back like this, it becomes a pyrrhic victory because you use five or six pitchers and you burn your staff out in this park for the next day or sometimes the next four or five days. You be very careful. 3-0 and is the count to Jody Davis. Smith is one of the two pitchers warming 
in the Cub bullpen down the left field line. He probably had a green light on 3 0, but Allen missed with it and walks it. Well, he's got Hassey from the left side, Gary Woods from the right, or the switch hitter Dave Owen, and I would assume it's going to be Hassey. Ron Hassey over from the Cleveland Indians. Sutcliffe Frazier trade, the controversial deal, finally was finalized. And as soon as Hassey was announced, we're going to have another double switch. Herzog going to Doug Harvey, the home plate umpire. We're going to take Lonnie Smith out of the game in left field and put Tito Landrum out there. Lonnie Smith walked, and then Ozzie Smith struck out. The last out in the seventh, so Lonnie will leave, and this double switch may be coming. Suter, probably at Lonnie Smith's spot. Landrum. Suter is coming in to try and protect the one run lead and our scorecards are beginning to look like Egyptian hieroglyphics with all these double switches. Well a while ago it looked like the Cardinals wouldn't need Suter today they led nine to three now it's nine eight Suter is in facing the pinch hitter Hassey Davis is at first base with two out last half of the seventh Landrum goes to left field to replace Lonnie Smith Landrum bats in the seventh spot in the order. Suter assumes the number one spot in the batting order with Smith out of the game. And Hassey takes a strike. Suter not striking out many. There's Landrum out in left field. Place Lonnie Smith. Suter not striking out as many. Earnings pitch still walks very, very few. Split fingered fastball. Mike Marshall, the kinesiologist, former great reliever, calls it a one-fingered screwball. Little chopper, which her takes and steps on second to force Davis. So for the Cubs in the last half of the seventh, no runs, no hits, a walk, and a man is left. They'll entrust the last two frames to Suter. The lead down to one. Now, what a day for Willie McGee. Five RBIs with his three base hits. He dialed eight his last time up. It's the expression some ball players use for a home run because in a hotel room you got to dial eight to get long distance. Well, he went over the wall and right last time. One and two. Whitey Herzog talks about Willie McGee as the only hitter he has ever seen that it's exactly the same when it's three balls and no strikes or no balls and two strikes. He said he just goes up there swinging, wailing away. Never feels the pressure of on base situations. Sometimes that gets him in trouble when he it's overly aggressive and goes out of his strike zone. He gets himself out more I think than the pitchers do Bob swinging at bad pitches and yet he still hits a lot of bad pitches in play for base sets. At Atlanta they're in the eighth and the Dodgers lead the Braves eight to two. 2-2 pitch to Willie McGee. Sandberg has to hurry to get Willie and barely does. The two people you think about in the National League, maybe all of baseball, getting down to first base. Juan Samuel, the Phillies from the right side. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody quicker than him, ever, on the right side going down to first. And from the left side, the man right here, Willie McGee, who made it bang bang, fraction of a step. Sandberg battling the sun on that high pop, high chopper off home plate. Hendrick is one for three with a walk and has a couple of RBIs today. Drove home the Cardinals' first run with a first inning single and played it another with a ground out in the second. A one pitch. Curve misses one and one. Trout started, lasted just an inning and a third for the Cubs. He was followed by Bordy, Knowles, Bruce Starr, Stoddard, and now Frazier, the sixth Cub pitcher. One and two. Well, the Cub hitters and a couple of walks hit batsmen by the Cardinals bullpen have made this a good ball game. Like it was going to be a blowout. Of it, but Davis was able to hold it on the tip, and a 
that's a strikeout for Frazier. The man who set up so many of those saves for the Goose, Goose Gossage, their teammates with the Yankees. Frazier then went to arbitration. He's about the fourth player of the Yankees. Uh, maybe a few more that have gone to arbitration. They were gone. Rick Cerrone went to arbitration, but he was kept. A few others left in a hurry for Mr. Steinbrenner's team. Ball one to David Green. It was in 1981 that George Frazier lost three World Series games. And I was tremendously impressed. I was in the locker room after that sixth and final game of the World Series, the Dodgers beating the Yankees. As you might expect, a herd of reporters around Frazier must have taken an hour and a half for the crowd to thin out. Green hits it on the nose. Sandberg plays the short hop and throws him out. But Frazier stood there and calmly and politely fielded all the questions, showed a lot of class in a moment of adversity, and retires the side in order here. Boa, Hebner, and Dernier in the eighth. Boa trying to drag a bunt and missing it for strike one against Suter. Suter, you'll notice, pitches out of the stretch, even at the start of an inning. Nobody on base. That's how he feels most comfortable. Green with Suter covering, and they barely nip Boa. And Boa, Boa barely or almost nipped Suter's leg. He got a lot of the bag, and Larry avoided spiking him. Green is a very, very agile first baseman. Suter almost didn't get down there in time, did he? Okay, he'll get you the more ground balls. He used to get a lot more strikeouts, but that split-fingered fastball that Roger Craig has eight of his ten pitchers thrown over to the Tigers. Says it's an easy pitch to teach. Look at that thing go down. Did you see the Roger Craig comment recently about a reunion the 1964 Cardinals had in St. Louis? Roger said the entire pitching staff was here except for Gibson. But of course, Gibson was the entire <laughs> pitching staff. <laughs> also had Dr. Ron Taylor on that staff. Roger Craig, Dr. Ron Taylor, now the team doctor of the Toronto Blue Jays. It's quite a story. Hebner had a pinch single back in the sixth when the Cubs scored five times and he remained in the game. Hebner touched Suter for a game winning homer in late April at St. Louis. Sure, Bruce remembers that. The Cubs won the ball game 3 2 on Hebner's late home run. One and two the count. Outside, two and two. And the Pedroza Hayes fight from Panama is the key element of sports world after baseball. 2 2 pitch. A chance for her. Two down on the Chicago eighth. Here come the people who've done the damage. On the Cubs side. Mm. Six for eight. Six RBIs between Dernier and Sandberg. Hebner at last at bat was trying to pull the ball. He was just going downtown. With the weak ground ball on the right side. He was trying to get one in the air into the wind and tie it up. Let's take it a step further. You saw that Dernier and Sandberg are six for eight today. Our stat man Steve Horn tells me that over their last three games, they're a combined 17 for 28. Mm. Two and oh to Dernier. If he should reach. You can bet he'll be running. They complement each other so well, don't they? Because with, if Dernier gets on, Sandberg's going to get more fastballs usually. Two and one. And that thing is so hard to lay off. There's Sandberg. And maybe the single most devastating pitch I. And finishing pitch that I've seen in a dozen years. And the knuckleball is great, and the, the hard fastballs, and the gossip, and some of the other. But this silly thing here starts at your waist. By the time you swing it, it's at your ankles. The 2 2 pitch with two out and nobody on. 
and Dernier gets a piece of it to stay alive. For many years, Suter wouldn't teach that pitch to anybody. He felt that if he shared the expertise on that pitch and showed the technique and the mechanics of it, that many other pitches would start throwing and it would diminish the value of his pitch. Feeling that the more that threw it, the more the hitter would see it. Again, the 2 2. Jardier hits it hard, but Van Slyke comes up with it. And the Cubs are set down 1 2 3 in the eighth by Suter. The Cardinals cling to the 9 8 lead as we head for the top of the ninth. Hector Lopez, number 11, that close stance, good right handed pinch hitter. Tommy Hur leads off on the top of the ninth. Cardinals looking to give Suter some breathing room. They lead it 9 to 8. Good thing about George Frazier, he can give you a lot of innings in middle relief. He can pitch three, four days in a row, give you a couple innings here, inning there, a couple hitters. Tough on right handed hitters. You can drop down a little bit to almost sidearm. That's three quarters that slider that running fastball rubber arms what he's got Cubs have used six pitchers Cardinals three Cinderella started for St. Louis and still stands to be the winner after working five and a third he was followed by Allen and now Suter is in two and one to her tomorrow it'll be Joaquin Andujar what a comeback 11 wins six losses. he says it's only luck Mighty Herzog said he's Hitting spots better, come up with a better off-speed pitch. Got the slider down. He'll face Rick Sutcliffe. Won his first game over here the other day. That's a base hit for her to start the ninth. Jernier gets over and plays it back in. And her now is three for five. Three singles for Tommy Her today. So they'll be looking for the sacrifice. You remember this man? They do on the other side of town. Brett Burns does after Burns pitched a brilliant, brilliant what, 10 innings and Landrum came up and jolted White Sox fans and the White Sox. 10th inning homer at Comiskey, game four of the American League playoffs. Her gets back ahead of Frazier's throw. Snapped a scoreless tie. The Orioles won that day to claim the American League pennant and of course went on to win the World Series in five games over the Phillies. Tito squares to Vaughn and it's foul. You mentioned Andahar. I heard some talk that the Cardinals might switch to left hander Ricky Horton for tomorrow. Herzog was reluctant to pitch a left hander against the Cubs. The Cubs have the best record against left handed pitching in the National League so far this year. Their lineup loaded with right handed power hitters. There's Whitey and a brief glimpse of the crew cut beneath that Redbird cap. But I think Whitey might switch to Horton tomorrow and then use Andahar Monday in St. Louis. Now Whitey's had trouble with his starting staff since the beginning when Bob Force went down and they're talking about the possibility of lower back surgery on Bob Force. Force had started rather slowly but he's been kind of a one of the nucleus of the staff for years. So we've had Danny Cox and we're looking at Several others are trying to work in the rotation. The points, shoulder sore. Stupor struggled yesterday again. Landrum lays off. It's one and one. I'll tell you, they're getting to the point now. With Landrum up with Hebner and Durham charging. So Herzog may be thinking of a switch. Well, if he drops this ball down, you may see a hit and run. Let's see what they decide. He bunts and it's foul again one and two. Tony did you ever play any third base at all in your professional career. Yes. That has got to be a really scary feeling charging in on the bunt and knowing there's always the chance that they take the bunt sign off and a right handed batter swings away and I don't care who you are Brooks Robinson Cleet Boyer you get that close and somebody hits it right on the nose if it happens to be right at you heaven forbid could take your head off. Well knowing what you just said I just never charged. <laughs> Much no, to your manager's more, delight. <laughs> more so on the artificial surface now where the ball get on you in such a hurry. Landrum takes outside and low two and two.
probably the part of the game Tommy heard that's been hurt the most by the knee surgery is that first step in the quickness. So his stolen bases have been cut considerably. Is he going? Nope. Ball third strike. Slow curve ball and Tito took it. Now Bo and Frazier with one out. Talking about who's going to cover, how they're going to pitch Porter. Bo will probably say with a left hand hitter up, I'll be taking the throw. Any ball hit back to you. May go back and pass the word to Sandberg. And run the ball in on Porter. Keep it away. And play him accordingly. Staying away. One to Porter, who's walked twice, once intentionally. Grounded out and lined out. It's a fun battle all the time. A pitcher like Frazier running the fastball away. Porter saying, hey, look, I've got a hole between Sandberg and Durham holding her on. I want to turn on the ball and sneak it through, try to get a first and third. Chances are any pitch inside will be the breaking ball, or if it's a fastball, it'll be off the plate inside. They don't want him to jerk that ball through that spot between Sandberg and Durham. Setting up outside again. And he steps off. He wasn't on the rubber, so he can bluff that play to first base. Sandberg, Matthews, and Durham will be the hitters in the last half of the ninth for the Cubs. One and one to Porter with one out and one on. Top half of the ninth, 9 8 St. Louis. The more you think about it, Tony, it remains to be seen what will happen in the last half of the ninth, but the cutoff play looms as a big one now in the sixth when Van Slyke cut off the throat of the plate and nailed Sandberg trying to advance to second on Sandberg's hit which produced two runs and made it 9 8. Porter pops it foul. Hebner going over but he runs out of room. If Van Slyke hadn't made that play Sandberg would have been in scoring position with one out and the inning would have still been alive. Not only did it erase Sandberg but it killed the Cub momentum a little bit. That's one of the first things that Don Zimmer when he came over and they had a conversation with Jim Fry that Fry said look we're going to lose some ball games maybe by getting thrown runners thrown out but I want you to keep them moving. We're going to try and force mistakes with the addition of the speed of Dernier. They want to try and take the extra base and then Zimmer fits right into that pattern. He's a very very aggressive third base coach. Order steps out. Well, sometimes you live and die with that speed. Some said the White Sox last year in the league championship series. Too many runners thrown out. They were overly aggressive. But those are the guys who mess around with numbers. Try and force mistakes and sooner or later it's going to pay off for you. Got to keep the pressure on the defense. I said Baltimore's defense wouldn't crack last year. St. Louis hasn't today. Two and two to Porter with Van Slyke on deck. Again, dives back. He lays off, and the count is full. in either bullpen for about the first time all day isn't it assuming that he's going to be going off first base trying to open up a hole for Porter Porter is shortened up on his bat an inch or so choked up a little bit he's trying to put the ball in play Cardinals do that as well as any team start base runners and prevent hitting in the double plays getting a piece of it what is it they say if you don't have to dive back Dodgers are having their own way with Atlanta. You don't have to dive back. Your lead isn't big enough. It's a little Maury Wills theory, wasn't it? Take a long lead and take a stride in the dive. Oh. 
There he goes on the 3 2. They stay out of the double play. Sandberg throws Porter out. Probably would have been a double play ball if her had not been running, considering the fact that Porter isn't the fastest guy in the world. Now they're going to walk Van Slyke intentionally because this pitcher spot is due next. Suter is hitting in the leadoff spot, having taken Lonnie Smith's position in the batting order on one of the many double switches that each club has pulled today. Suter in 27 ball games has just got five at bats. Doesn't have a hit this year. So he's due. In a game between these two clubs in St. Louis recently, Whitey Herzog walked two men to load the bases and get to Lee Smith in a one-run game, knowing that Jim Fry wouldn't pinch hit for Smith under those circumstances. But Fry was anticipating the whole situation. And on the first pitch to Smith, the Cubs pulled a triple steal yep. with Leon Durham stealing home and the other two runners moving up behind him. Triggered by Don Zimmer, who has that freedom as a third base coach. He went over to Durham and said, look, if he doesn't watch you too closely, keep on going. Durham breathed a sigh of relief when Lee Smith didn't swing at him. Earlier we mentioned Rick Wise with the two home runs and the no hitter on June 23rd 1971 another hitting milestone for a pitcher June 23rd 73 Ken Brett one of the best hitting pitchers of recent times Suter taps this one foul hit home runs in four consecutive games Ken Brett George's brother I know you've got well we've got a little time while Frazier gets ready again the runners go back the other big day about how many years ago today was the Babe Ruth thing wasn't it? 66 years ago today June 23rd 1917 Babe Ruth then pitching for the Red Sox was thrown out of the game a one pitch to Suter taken for a strike 0 and 2 thrown out of the game after walking the first batter Ernie Shore came out of the bullpen there we go the man who was aboard was thrown out stealing and Shore retired the next 26 in a row greatest relief job in baseball history in effect a perfect game only 27 men came to the plate which you call long long relief isn't it? <laughs> Frazier's one two to Suter and the count holds I'll tell you the camera crew and uh, the guys in the truck been sharp today producer Ken Edmondson Director, what's what's his oh Bucky Gun? What's his name? Bucky Guns. Yeah. Bucky Guns. Yeah. Someday we're going to have to ask him how he got his nickname. Steve Horn, our statistician, helped by the Cubs. Ned Coletti. Good job, guys. Great camera work. And you get a lot of you get a lot of base runners like we've had today, and a lot of things happen. You've had it from every angle. Suter rolls it to Sandberg. He's made only three errors this year. Lowest total by any regular second baseman in the National League. And Sandberg throws Suter out. This has been one entertaining ball game, folks. And there's more drama coming up in the last half of the ninth. Just one example of the esteem in which Ernie Banks is held by baseball fans here in Chicago. Bill Murray the great comedian of Saturday Night Live fame he's got a movie out now with Dan Aykroyd Ghostbusters he's a Chicago native and a baseball fan he named his first child Homer and the kid's middle name is Banks so the kid's name reads as it would in a box score if Ernie had hit a round tripper the day before Homer Banks Murray. at the corners. Vance like especially down at third base to take the double away. Also even with the bag. For Bruce Suter they play a lot of right handed hitters to pull. If you can hit that ball solidly that split finger it's going to be to the left side many times in the hole. So Ozzie Smith way over toward third base. Tito Landrum playing Sandberg very deep in left field. 
Another on bit the of, outside corner, one and one. Another bit of defensive strategy. Herzog moving the outfield back. You're going to give the looping single to try and keep that hitter out of scoring position. So they're deep in center and left. Prevent the double or triple. seats can you Cinderella will have to wait for another day for his first big league victory. He left ahead, but it's a tie game now, and Durham, as Suter took a little bit off it, swings and misses two and two. What a great comeback by this Cubs ball club. Jim Fry has managed well, managed well so has Whitey Herzog. They've made the double switches, and then they've won it at the plate when they've won them there. Check swing foul. We get back to that sixth inning. Marlon walked leading it off. Davis struck out. Say hit by a pitch. Bola walked. And then things started popping for the Cubs. Four runs and seven hits. Sandberg's homer into the bleachers and left. Tied it at nine. Matthews followed with a single. He's at first with nobody out on the 2-2 pitch to the bowl. Leon Durham is lofted into left field. And Tito Landrum has a bead on it. One out. Cubs keep throwing the lumber at you. Keith Hernandez told us a few weeks back we did a Mets game that they're the best offensive team in the Eastern Division. Showed it with his comeback today. Orland had a homer yesterday. Hitless so far today. Takes a strike. If we go to the 10th, the Cardinals will have Ozzie Smith, Willie McGee, and George Hendrick to hit. The 0-1. Going. The runner is going. Swing and a miss. Here's Porter's throw. And he beat it. Oh, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Her really didn't see Matthews coming. I don't think it was a delayed steal, but Matthews did not appear to have a great jump. And Her tried to hold his ground as long as he could, not give that second base spot up. He took the throw on the run, a hard slide. When he made the swipe, the ball scoots out of his glove. Good call by the second base umpire, Jerry Crawford. He didn't call it too soon. He waits to make sure that Her has possession.
So now the 0-2 to Moreland. Misses one and two. Jody Davis is on deck. Gary Matthews, eighth stolen base of the season. Ozzie Smith to his left, flags it down, and throws him out. Moreland just threw his arms up in the air as he approached first base, saying, if any other human had been patrolling shortstop, I would have just had a game-winning hit. It's not so much that he throws his arms up, I think, at the fine play by Smith, I think a little bit in disgust at this high grass in the infield. That ball, that base hit labeled all over it, and the grass just stopped it. It was hit fairly sharply, but another outstanding play by Smith. Whitey Herzog once made the comment that Smith, and this is an exaggeration, I think, 100 runs a game, I don't think he saves 100, but he saved about three or four already today, hasn't he? 100 a season, I guess. Yeah. That's Whitey's thought. Comes out. I don't know if they're going to just put him on intentionally or just say, don't give him a strike. Gary Woods yeah. has moved into the on deck circle. Right-handed batter. We'll walk him intentionally. Whitey's not going to put the decision in the hands of even a veteran pitcher and catcher like Suter and Porter. He knows that Woods, once he's announced, the only other pinch hitter they have left is switch hitter Dave Owen, shortstop. And we mentioned it earlier because of the waiver thing. Henry Cotto cannot be called up and be activated till tomorrow. Fry is playing with just 24 players. He's got 11 pitchers. Verizer out disabled. He finally had the cast removed. Herzog knows this, that Fry is one man short. Ryan Sandberg started the inning with his fourth hit of the day, his 11th hit in his last three games, four Thursday in Pittsburgh. Whitey with the instructions. Three yesterday afternoon and a 9-3 Cup victory. Four today. And that home run, number eight on the year for Sandberg, tied it at nine. Now the Cubs trying to do again what they have done so often this year, rally and win in their last at bat. Gary Woods, four for 13 as a pinch hitter, hitting 333 on the air. I'll tell you, they both managed brilliantly today and put the right guys in the position in the right spot. Whitey Herzog's bullpen has failed him in middle relief. A called strike to Woods. The Cardinal problem all year has been run production. It would be especially galling with their bullpen to lose a game in which they scored nine runs and led by six. Bullpen, as Bruce Suter said before the game, has been outstanding. Sometimes teams just have those kinds of years where they can't put the defense, the pitching, and the hitting together at the same time. The 1 1 pitch. Fouled off down the right field line, one and two. Matthews is the runner at third, and he's all that matters. Davis, who received an intentional walk, is at first. Nine, nine, last half of the ninth. Davis down at first matters in this. He is not being held on by Green at first base. And any slow at ground ball, if he can get a good jump, he can, he can beat the force out at second base or force them to make the long throw across the diamond. So he's been giving a little leeway. Green play behind him. The one two. Ozzie Smith has it. Puts to her and will go to extra innings. There's nobody like him. There have been stars galore. Sandberg, Dernier, Willie McGee, and certainly this man, Ozzie Smith. Extra innings in Wrigley, tied at nine. Runners on first and third, two outs to the tie ball game. Bruce Suter goes to his pitch, the split-fingered fastball. Ozzie Smith, who doesn't believe in cheating a whole lot, overplaying hitters. Grass slows it down a little bit, so two nice plays by Smith in this inning. Keeps the Cardinals' hopes alive for extra innings. Lee Smith, who pitched an inning in two-thirds yesterday, struck out four. He got a lot of those strikeouts yesterday with a slider. Seventh pitcher used by Jim Fry and the Cubs. 
Ruggs. Bullpen is gone. Well, I'm sure somebody might volunteer. He's got Rainey, Russell, Eckersley, and Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe scheduled tomorrow. Russell started yesterday. Rainey, if this gets to be long drawn out, extra inning game, might volunteer and help out if needed. It's Ozzie Smith who leads off in the 10th. Foul ball, strike one. Trying to slap it by. Hebner playing in tight at third base. Suter's 16 saves leads the National League. Al Holland has 15, and the guy on the mound now for the Cubs, Lee Smith, is next with 14. A little bloop down the left side. Matthews chasing over and leaping wow. in. Boy, what an effort! And he's upset that he didn't come up with it. What a tremendous bit of hustle by Gary Matthews. He had a long run and he's battling the wind and looking almost into the sun. Now he goes from the sun to the shade. And the fan just got a piece of it. But once Matthews put that glove in the stands, he's fair game. No fan inter interference can be called in. The fan reaches out into the playing field over the stands. The umpire can call it. Lee Smith delivers to Ozzie Smith. Foul ball, same direction, still 0-2. Ozzie Smith is one for ten lifetime against the Cubs towering reliever Lee Smith. Throwing all fastballs to this point. See if he gets it with a slider the pitch that was so effective for him yesterday. Slaps it by him, base hit. That was interesting. Hebner, before that pitch was thrown with two strikes on Ozzie Smith, looked into the dugout to see if he should move back a little bit. Somebody probably said, nope, stay even with the bag. We still want you to guard the line and take the double away. You guard the line, you give ground to the left. Smith shot it through. So Ozzie now has a couple of hits and also a pair of walks. And here's Willie McGee. Three for five, a single, a triple, and a home run. Five RBIs. Just trying to find out something with McGee. See if the bat... And slides up the bat to tip off the butt. Hebner in tight and Durham will be charging. Ozzie is going. The pitch is taken low and away. Davis's throw. Safe. 19th stolen base for Ozzie Smith. He's been caught just five times. The little guys played one heck of a game today. Left hand hitter McGee gives a little bit of an advantage. For the base stealer, catcher has to throw over the top. This seems like a simple thing, but look at how straight a line Ozzy Smith uses from first to second. I say it's simple geometry, but geometry, but so many guys just kind of waver off a step or two, and they get just thrown out, bang bang. He'll be trying to pull the ball, but he doesn't. This could be a base hit. Matthews racing toward it. Can't get to it. Ozzy Smith rounds third. He'll score. Willie McGee has a four-hit day, and he has hit for the cycle. second a single in the fourth a homer in the sixth and now a double in the tenth six RBIs for Willie McGee last one hit for the cycle was it Lou Brock for this Cardinal team show you how funny this game is with Ozzie Smith at second base nobody out you want your hitter to pull the ball the Give himself up. Not McGee, he went the other way. Gets the gravy. Hendrick grounds it to short. Oh, McGee's yes. going to advance to third anyway as Boa throws him out. How's that for speed? Very few could have done that on a sharp hit ball to shortstop. Boa looked up. Second time it's happened. McGee was on third base earlier with one out with the infield in. Hendricks hit a ground ball to short. Boa looked up and McGee was crossing home plate. Now in a play that they say is bad baseball. That's what the book will tell you. Ball to the left side. Don't go to third. McGee with that great acceleration. First to the third base. You're right, by the way, Tony. The last time a Cardinal hit for the cycle, it was Lou Brock against San Diego at San Diego in May of 1975. Willie McGee has done it today. Looks like Steve Braun 
will come on as a pinch hitter. Left handed batter to face Smith. Braun has had 46 at bats this season, hitting at 239, but a decent on base percentage. He's walked eight times. A base percentage of 352. So he bats for David Green. There are a number of moves left open to Whitey Herzog. One possible one would be to move Van Slyke to first base and insert Mike Ramsey, the utility man, at third base in the bottom half of the inning. Braun can also play the outfield, in which case Hendrick could move to first base if that's what Whitey wanted to do. Infield's in. It'll be the fastball of Smith. Against Braun trying to get the sacrifice fly. They're near with a good throwing arm. Moreland right with a good throwing arm. Gary Matthews, I guess about average. Maybe a little better. And slider. Lee Smith not throwing quite as hard. He's had a pulled muscle in his side. It's bothered him over the last few weeks. The 0 1 pitch. Here he a comes. little squibber. Yes. They won't get Willie McGee, and Durham has to be content just to tag Braun out. Contact play again, like it was the time when Hendricks got it short. I wonder, was McGee ever timed? Did you know of Bob in the 100 yard dash as a high school kid? I, maybe he never even ran track, but he just accelerates so, so quickly. Durham looked up. And he was three fourths of the way home already as he was feeling the ball. So he's gotten some RBIs with that speed. Got one on the ground up to short for Hendrick. Just got an RBI with that speed for Braun. Tommy Hurris, three for five, three singles. I imagine if you're a fan of whatever team winds up losing this game. It might be difficult to accept this point of view, but if you're just a fan of the game itself and no particular rooting interest for either club, you leave a ballpark like Wrigley Field after a game like this glowing. This has just been a great ball game. It's a long time since we saw Cinderella, who started for the Cardinals, and Trout for the Cubs. And you wonder what's going to happen to this Cubs bullpen now. They've got to get some complete games out of somebody. They've used seven pitchers. Her gives one a long ride, but Moreland is going to be there. Ball is not carrying in that direction. The Cardinals come up with two, and Willie McGee was the key man in the inning. They take an 11-9 lead to the bottom of the tenth. Is it safe today? Don't bet on it. Coming up after the baseball, Eusebio Pedroza versus Gerald Hayes from Panama. I hope it's half as exciting as this ball game has been. Boa leads it off and takes a ball from Suter. Unless something should change drastically here in the last of the tenth, this week's NBC Light Beer from Miller player of the game is Willie McGee and Light Beer from Miller. A strike one and one is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of that man, Willie McGee to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. On another day, Ozzie Smith would have gotten the nod, but it was tough to ignore Willie McGee hitting for the cycle at six RBIs. Here's Tommy Herr, and he throws Larry Bow out. These are the kind of days where when you're on the losing team, which looks more and more likely with the Cubs, there's Mike Jorgensen at first. A lot of good days are ruined, like Ryan Sandberg, Tying it up with a home run of four for five day. Dernier, three runs scored, three base hits, stolen base, two RBIs. Mm. Here's Hebner now. Foul ball. We saw Jorgensen, the new first baseman. When I was guessing about all the possible moves Whitey Herzog might make after pinch hitting for David Green, I forgot the most obvious one, the simplest one. He's got a new first baseman now, and Mike Jorgensen. Over from Atlanta, along with Ken Daly in the Ken Obergfell deal. And so Jorgensen, who has been with a number of ball clubs and is a good fielding first baseman, is there now. Well, Herzog's got some extra moves he can make if he needs to. He's still got Glenn Brummer, right handed hitter, extra catcher. Mark Salas, a left handed hitter, switch hitter Mike Ramsey. He's got Rucker up in his bullpen along with 
Lottie, all of Fry's bullpen's gone, and only one extra man left. Dave Owens, switch hitter. Herzog has his bullpen going. Fouled at the plate, two and two. In the bullpen for the Cardinals, Jeff Lottie. And Rucker is also up and throwing. Rucker, the left hander. Hebner gratefully got a little bit of a piece of that split fingered fastball that shot down from Bruce Souter. Interesting to see if the Cardinals re sign him. Maybe one of the reasons they went out in case with you know, his demands they may feel are exorbitant, they went out and got. Neil, Neil Allen. Allen, yep. Here's a chance for Jorgensen. He'll take it himself. And the Cardinals are one out away from winning a wild one. The Major League Baseball game of the week has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. And by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation. AC Delco is the way to go. The eight out shooter has gotten thus far have all been ground ball outs. So when he's the best when he keeps the ball down. Dernier trying to get on and give Sandberg another chance. Takes a ball. Souter gets so many hitters out with pitches out of the strike zone. They just can't lay off the split finger. And he continues to throw it even when he's behind. There it is. Dernier may be instructed. Two runs down to go up and take a strike. That's setting the table right there, isn't it? Side corner and at the knees, three and one. Three and two. I'll tell you, in spite of some of the protestations by the Cubs early in this ballgame when Trout was on, Doug Harvey's called a heck of a ballgame. Very little bit of bickering since that first and second inning. And now the Cardinal fans, and there are many of them, chanting for Suter, the payoff pitch. He held up Did and he took ball it? four. No. Porter may have thought that he fouled it or it was a strike. Here comes the man again. What a day he's had, Sandberg. Mm. He checked it. Oh, that's funny. That was very, very close to being a strike. And I wonder if Porter boxing that ball as he did didn't lose the pitch for Suter. It was close. They're going to let Dernier steal if he wants it. His last time up, Sandberg homered to tie it at nine in the ninth. He's the tying run at the plate now in the tenth. Dernier should take it if they give it to him. They remove the force at second base. Jorgensen at first play behind him saying, "You want to steal? Your run's no good." The 1-0 pitch. Got the corner one and one. Our game today was produced by Ken Edmondson, directed by Bucky Guntz. Mike Weissman is the executive producer of NBC Sports, coordinating producer of baseball, Harry Coyle. 1-1 one, one pitch.
Matthews takes a ball and move over Willie McGee. Oh. There may be a new player of the game. Five Ryan Sandberg, six. five hits, including two home runs. Six RBI. Here's Ozzy. He took a bad hop, but that's nothing for him. He throws to Jorgensen. Wow, what a ball game. We will go to the 11th. Tony, not only can I not remember the last time I broadcast a game this good, I can't remember the last time I've seen a game this enjoyable, this entertaining. Well, you get those kinds here in Fenway Park, don't you, or Detroit's Tiger Stadium. Here's the second game-tying home run by Ryan Sandberg in the ninth and the tenth. How dramatic can you be? Five for six today. What a job you're near. And six walks and one hit batsman. One of those walks intentionally given up by the bullpen of the Cardinals. And four of those have come back to haunt him and scored. That's what happened. They walked her near, and then Sandberg put it to him again. Salas bats for Landrum and pops it up. Sandberg wants it. They'll cheer his every move. He's got it. And more and more, Jimmy Fry, a man who coached for Earl Weaver, the great Oriole teams, and saw. Bobby Gritch come up as a kid. More and more Jimmy Fry says that this man, offensively and defensively, reminds him of Bobby Gritch, one of the most underrated players around. They had such great players with those Orioles. Gritch was overlooked, but they, they feel the like, they battle every ball, they rarely miss the ball, they turn the double play, and now Sandberg started for power. Just like Gritch. Darrell Porter now. If the Cardinals could ever find an inning in which Willie McGee batted and Sandberg didn't, I think they'd win this game. Strike one to Porter. I tell you, Roy Hobbs, the natural, would be pleased by Sandberg's performance today. They don't come any more heroic than that. Man, what a day. at Wrigley one of the great ballparks perfect day for a game weather wise 11 11 in the 11th Smith to Porter misses just outside two and one not too often in the ball game you see the first and second hitters Denier and Sandberg in this case driving in nine runs of the game huh between them comes the 2-1. Grounded towards short and Boa is up with it. Two gone in the Cardinal 11. Whitey Herzog won't sleep too well tonight whether they win or lose. Smith and Suter. That's what it's down to now. Each has been more effective on other occasions, on countless other occasions. I wonder if either has pitched, however, in a game any more memorable than this one. Mm. At least any more memorable during the regular season. Suter, of course, put the finishing touches on the Cardinals World Championship back in 82. 2-0 to Van Slyke. Well, Herzog has other people to go to if he wants to. In case Suter weakens if this game goes on, he, he's got somebody left in his bullpen. Rucker, Van Olen, Lottie, Daly if he decides to use him again, although I doubt it after yesterday. But for Jim Fry, he's down to starting pitchers now. Rainey, Russell, Eckersley, and Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe scheduled tomorrow. Van Slyke takes it high and away, 3-0. The pitcher's spot is yep. next, and Mike Ramsey has yep. moved into the on-deck circle for the Cardinals. He walks him on four pitches. 
being extremely careful with Van Slyke who is somewhat of a home run threat. So Sooner's not going to finish this ball game for the Cardinals. Ramsey's going to pinch hit. We started with standing room only. It is still SRO at Wrigley. They haven't left the house tops either. More people there than we've ever seen congregated outside the ballpark. I'll tell you, this is a telephone game, Tony. This is the kind of game where you pick up the phone, you start calling your buddies. <laughs> Say, you won't believe this. You got to turn the game on. Or if you live out on Waveland, get up on the roof. You don't need announcers for this one. But we're glad we're here. Oh. Van Slyke has 10 stolen bases, been caught just twice. He was doing a little groundskeeping at first. And look at the way Davis is setting up behind the plate. He's poised to throw. This is the kind of game where a guy batting 071 is likely to be the hero. Davis had been thrown better this year. He's bounced a couple throws today, but Johnny Oates has worked with him, quickened up his release. I think what happens to Davis more than anything else, especially a game like this, your legs get a little tired. You can't spring out of the crouch. It happened to him last year. Affected his hitting and his throwing, catching so often. And a good lead off first. There he goes, taken high on the throw. Won't get him. He's in scoring position with two out. Those are one of those where Jody Davis almost has no chance at all. Lee Smith at about six six, who's fairly quick to first base, but slow coming home. And Jody is forced to really rush that throw so much he's bouncing the ball, but he's not going to get anybody with a perfect throw on that. Cardinal speed has shown in this ball game so far. Kept him in it really defensively and offensively. Mm. Ozzy Smith, yep. Willie McKee. Yep. Now Van Slyke with what could be a big steal, depending upon what Ramsey does. 2 0 pitch. Swing and a miss, 2 and 1. For the Cubs in the last half of the 11th, what could be called the heart of the order, Matthews, Durham, and Moreland, but any inning, which doesn't include Dernier and Sandberg, doesn't include the Cubs' best. Two and two. At least not today, Dernier and Sandberg have been the offensive story for the Cubbies. Two-two pitch with two out. Sandberg. He can do no wrong. Back with the last half of the 11th from Wrigley Field in Chicago after this. It's ball one from Dave Rucker to Leon Durham leading off in the last half of the 11th inning. Followed by Moreland and Davis. Inside two and two and oh. When Rucker hit the mound for the Cardinals, it was the 18th player that Whitey Herzog has used. Jim Fry has already used 19, his entire bullpen, so he's gotten a starter up now in case Smith either gets in trouble or comes up to hit. So he's into his starting rotation now, and Chuck Rainey loosening up in the bullpen. There's Rainey. 2 1 pitch coming to Durham. Three balls and a strike. For those of you just joining us, you got to be sorry about what you missed. Cardinals got one in the first, so did the Cubs. Cardinals got six in the second inning. Eventually, Durham walks. Eventually, they built leads of 7 1 and 9 3. The Cubs got five runs in the sixth inning, got back to within 9 8. Ryan Sandberg, as you look at scores of other games today, none of which will equal this one. Ryan Sandberg led off the ninth with a homer off Bruce Souter. His fourth hit of the game had tied at 9-9. Willie McGee produced a double for the go-ahead run in the top half of the tenth and later scored what looked like an insurance run, making it 11-9 in favor of the Cardinals' top half of the tenth, and Willie McGee at that point had hit for the cycle. With two out and nobody on, Rucker is leaving now, and Lottie is going to come in. Two outs and nobody on in the last half of the tenth. Bob Dernier drew a walk. 
and Ryan Sandberg, also known as Frank Merriwell today, delivered another home run off Suter, this time a two-run shot to tie it at 11. And now we are in the 11th. The big days, well, it hasn't belonged to the bullpen on these of these two teams, nor the starters. Cinderella, although he pitched pretty well, looked like he was going to get a win with a big lead, nor Trout. Now it's Lottie. Big day by Willie McGee. He's hit for the cycle. Six runs batted in already in this ball game. Sandberg has seven runs batted in. There he is. It is early to start talking MVP. But for all that he has done, aside from winning a gold glove last year, his first year, full year at second base, that is the man that Dallas Green wanted in the trade with the Phillies. He said, I'll make the deal if you throw in the kid, Ryan Sandberg. They threw the kid all right, didn't they? Oh. You can smile, Ryan. It's your first five hit game for your career, and the seven RBIs is also a one game personal high. So now each team has used 19 players. Remember, Jim Fry played one short with just 24. Which seems insignificant, but all he's got is Dave Owens left on the bench, switch hitter as a position player. Here's Moreland. Do you sacrifice? Well, he's not the guy I would, but they're kind of looking for it. I let him whack away. He's not a punter. He's swinging. No sign of the bond as he takes the ball. Lottie, pretty much of a power pitcher, came in yesterday, threw some good fastballs, hard slider. See if he can get it up again with that fastball. Don Zimmer flashing a lot of signs in today's ball game. He'll have wrist cramps. He's oh, going on the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Porter's throw. He's in there. In the center field. He'll continue to third. The winning run at third with nobody out. Folks, we will probably see the bases walked loaded now and the outfield come in. The line drive depth. See what Herzog has to do. Have to walk Moreland and Davis, I would assume. A tough pitch to throw on a slider low and away. The ball sails in. Herr tries to keep it in the infield. The ball skitters off his glove, and Durham pops right up. So the Cardinals have shown speed, but so has this newly revised Cub team by Dallas Green, along with Jim Fanks. I'll tell you, these bases on balls have haunted this Cardinal staff all day long. And they hit batsmen earlier. Looks so comfortable early for Whitey Herzog, didn't it? There's one, Marlin. Air will have to be charged, obviously, to Porter for that ball bouncing in the center field. Stolen base for Durham. Allowing Durham to go to the extra base. See what that's the third intentional walk given up by Herzog in this ballgame. He walked Davis in the ninth intentionally. Nine walks given up by Cardinal pitching and one hit batsman. Whitey may lose this game, but he really can't second guess himself. He had his best in there, and Sandberg twice hit him for game tying homers. He had Allen in ahead of Suter try and prevent Suter from coming into the game and Allen just couldn't get the job done. Here comes the last position player Jim Fry's got left. You think Spike Owen Dave Owen's brothers watching out in Seattle Spike plays shortstop for the Mariners and his brothers up in a tough situation needs a sacrifice fly Have to bring everybody in the outfield come way in McGee with an outstanding throwing arm in center outstanding in right in Hendricks. Salas and left we're not sure of he should have a good arm because he's a catcher outfielder good speed at third base with the, the only base runner that means anything Durham he jammed that shoulder diving head first in his second base they are way in in the outfield Owen is a switch hitter who's hitting just 133 left handed. 
304 overall. Nobody out, and they're loaded in the 11th. Foul ball, strike one. Cubs have now used 20 players. 39 players using this ball game. The only position player left on either bench is Glenn Brummer, the catcher. The 0-1, inside and low, 1-1. One one. If Owen doesn't get it done, Boa would be next. Beyond Boa, Hebner. That's it. Yep. Game-winning hit. Ryan Sandberg and Willie McGee will share our light beer for Miller player of the game. The Cubs, who trailed 7-1, 9-3, trailed 9-8 in the ninth, 11-9 in the tenth. They come back and win at 12-11. Can't remember the last time I saw a better one. Back after these messages from your local station. <laughs> 